Okay, boom. Welcome back to another episode of AlphaCast. I'm Mike Winner, and I'm here with Dr. Bear Paul Lando, as always. We have a very special guest today from uh, the Secret Energy Podcast. You might know him also from the Inner Standing YouTube channel, as well as a number of other things. Sivan Bomar, author of the acclaimed book, The Code to the Matrix, and developer of popular websites dedicated to humanity's awakening. Savan's studies have traversed Islam, Christianity, Gnosticism, Kabbalah, ufology, self-mastery, internal cleansing, chakra activation, and everything in between. We are so excited to have him on board today uh, for another episode of AlphaCast as we dig deep into inner standing and really just kind of ride the waves of consciousness and the flow of this, of this chat. Uh, how are you doing this morning, Savan? Great to have you on the show. Ooh, man, like I said, it's great to be with you. I love rolling with the winners. You know, you and Barry. <laughs> And it's uh, its own point. Like, this is a long time coming. And uh, I feel like we're going to have a blast today. It's great to also be on this platform and, you know, and be streaming to something that, you know, is working on decentralization. And, you know, I think we have a lot to really discuss because we have a lot in common with what we're doing with the community and our tribes, our audiences, and, and also what we're doing with ourselves and how we're exploring ourselves and really seeking uh, to meet the challenge of, you know, what I say is the high maintenance uh, infin infinite life and really bringing that all into balance in the space that we're in right now in 2020, the movie from the future. So it's great to be here. Yeah. 2020, right? Clear vision. It's yes. the time is now to really see where we're going. Um, I mean, you can't think of a better number for that as we really move into this, uh, into this age of Aquarius. Um, and something that you talked about, uh, on one of your recent podcasts is the whole idea of these elements and and you know we're now entering the the air element uh, epoch what are your yeah. thoughts on that well you know I, I even like to drill in a bit more because you know sometimes the um, it's almost like a clock in itself so you know if you're looking at the big cog or the small cog that's really going to define what you're capable of seeing and uh, especially when we're speaking to like audiences I like to just be a little bit more refined at you know, just understanding that we have these ages and, you know, we've gone through, you know, the industrial age, we've got these golden ages and it looks like we just came off the age of plastic <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> it's a bit in the ocean. Right. And, uh, and then now we're, we're entering to this age of ether and obviously all of our ages are always based on our, our currency, our economy. Uh, so even the plastic age, you know, your credit cards. And I don't think people really realize the, I guess for business people, the miracle of plastic, you know, and just ever watching some of those old documentaries and seeing how just the idea of not making things out of metal and wood uh, drove the prices down and, and really equal dollar signs in the eyes of those that were involved in that industry. And then, you know, we start using the plastic credit cards and, and then now we, you know, we've morphed into something even new in this age. And of course we carry all those ages with us, but this is the predominant one. And now we're sitting here in ether, ether, you know, the ethereum, the cryptos and, um, and really also the discovery of the etheric body, you know, all of that ties in together and that becoming important. I guess I should say that because, you know, there's ancestors that have been looking into the etheric side of things forever. Um, but it's, it's for me, a living experience because um, I've definitely tapped into not only a, no a lot of knowledge and wisdom, I also have the experience. I've been on debt for 10 years just working with the conscious community, but really sp exploring spirituality on a deep level all my life. It was something that I was, I had to be put into when I was younger anyway. My mother made it a prerequisite of even being in her house. And so because of that, you know, after having all these years of accumulative information, I'm, I'm really always seeking to see how we can put that information into action and how we can ground and connect what we know into the time that we're living in and start speaking the language that more people are speaking. I know sometimes we address just the conscious community, but I remember maybe I wasn't in, at a time where I wasn't necessarily encompassed in that title, the conscious community. And, uh, and then, so I always look to, well, if I'm talking to somebody, that's the people who are listening to me. <laughs> so how do I get to the people who are not listening to me and, and where are they really at? And, where are common denominators? And I find that we, of course, have so many, uh, but what we have a tendency not to have is the unification components. And that's why I like what you're doing. Uh, and it's just because like sometimes we can complain that, oh, you know, people are doing this, people are doing that, but it's also like, what, what, what is the alternative? <laughs> so we too have to be prepared and to be acclimated properly to 
pioneer our own way, like to drive in our own path that others that want to harmonize with our vibrational frequency can sustain themselves financially, mentally, physically, and all the different aspects that uh, create, you know, life in this existence. So I definitely feel what's happening in these changes of ages, like lots of lineups happening. I think even right now we're right in the session of another massive lineup uh, astronomically. And, uh, and, but I feel that also in my everyday life. So I always say that you want a 2012, you can really make a 2012 happen inside of you if you choose to line up. And so that's, that's my approach at this. You know, we breathe in and we breathe out. And I'm just, like I said, I'm, I'm elated to be calm with myself and satisfied with myself because that actually allows me to do the most that I can for, for others. Yeah. Savant, sounds uh, great. First off, uh, thanks for being with us today. I'm a little jealous. I have to say cause I'm looking through your window behind you and I'm seeing nice bright tropical green and uh, in contrast with me, I'm looking at white and I was up all night dealing with snow crap outside and <laughs> you know, we're off grid. So I have to deal with infrastructure and everything on my own just to get on the show today and wipe off the satellite dishes. And, but Hey, glad to see you're down here enjoying the tropics. I miss it a lot. Uh, Costa Rica was one of our possible destinations a few years ago when we moved back to the mainland after years being out in the South Pacific. And, um, uh, you know, because I was an old surfing addict and, and uh, my kids still surf down there where you're at. I have a lot of friends down your way. But, hey, thanks so much for being with us. And I like the way you started the show today with uh, just from the uh, perspective of the age of ether because ether, of course, is uh, – the transmutable intelligence substance that we can learn to interface with. Uh, and that's the intelligence substance, of course, uh, it's called by many names throughout the ages, prana, what have you, that uh, we can, uh, when we get the hang of it, create directly what we want to envision in our world and in our individual lives. And uh, what's, what we talk a lot about on this show, and I really want to hear about what uh, – uh, everything you're up to. And, I, and I've been looking through your site and some of your, uh, you know, your dialogues with other people and, and you really seem like a kindred spirit. So it's going to be a fun talk to, uh, today. And uh, what we, uh, last thing I want to say is we emphasize a lot that there's actually science that's been revealed on the planet today uh, that, um, you know, correlating with your idea of the age of ether, we call it the age of transmutation because we actually understand how to technologically as well as uh, individually interface through our own consciousness uh, with that substance that you're alluding to and uh, to take us into a whole world of, you know, the next phase. I think that we're already in, we're just seeing the, the last of all the, the garbage that, uh, you know, is cleansing from the earth, just like a body that's going through a healing. Sometimes you got to bring all the stuff to the surface. I believe that's what we're seeing now. But uh, we don't have to mine things from the earth. We don't have to be hooked into an energy grid. We don't have to earn other people's tokens in order to earn a living. We've got all the technology, the know-how, and most important, what you talk about that I hear is uh, the consciousness in order to tap in and do whatever the heck we want. We just have to change our mind from the engrams that have been implanted with certain vested interest, of course, telling us that uh, we have to envision their reality. So uh, I'm just going to sit back today and, and listen to you, and I'm really looking forward to the chat. And what I love about these chats is uh, we don't know what the heck we're going to talk about. And, uh, you know, just wh whatever comes up, let it fly, and uh, this will be fun. So thanks for being here. We really, really appreciate it. For sure. Yeah, thanks for the welcome. You know, it's always uh, great to be amongst brothers. And, uh, and those that are of like mind and, and making this process happen, you know, it's, uh, it's a work in progress, you know, and it, it takes definitely some patience and some compassion, you know, uh, especially if you're a bit further along on the journey than, than others. But I feel like for sure with us all lifting each other up and, and getting that, that vision clear, you know, and then starting to co-create that vision you know, we should really start seeing the quantumness of the ether. Like we don't have to wait as long as what it would take for some of the other more rudimentary aspects of, of how things grow to take place. We can actually start these, what I call quantum solutions. And, but that does definitely involve us coming together. And uh, because nobody really wants to work on this alone, I guess there's a kind of a predecessor kind of mentality of, of working, you know, by oneself, you know, being kind of the ultimate connect and, and making sure it happens. And even sovereignty kind of feels like that until you really get into it and realize that, 
you know, it actually has to do with just turning the energy inward and then utilizing uh, what you gain from that aspect to let that become your radiance and let that become, you know, how you're even designing. I just find personally that every change that I make to myself, that it equates to what I end up doing externally. Um, and when I have that switched the wrong way, then I face only disappointments. So me just continuously tuning myself up. And, and then also, I always say, instead of like the guru approach, even though I have many people that listen to the message and have grown from the message, I always feel like that this is more like a personal diary. And it just so happens you snuck in and, and you got my diary and you're reading it versus me just talking at you. It's more like, hey, I'm on this too. I got to make these changes too. I know exactly what we deal with because I'm also in the life with you. But this is how I'm tackling it based on, well, right now there's 26,000 people in our network. So let's say roughly that gives me uh, 54,000 eyes, right? And so if we're all utilizing that, that cortex to, to begin to go at something, then, you know, we just we have so much more and nobody is, is, is like raised to know this per se. And that's another thing. We're all coming to learn new dynamic ways of, of how to utilize even the resources that we have within us. And so this is an adventure. You know, I would love to look at it that way more than any of the, the other aspects of things. And the universe is a university, as I always say. So Earth is one of the classrooms and, and I'm looking to, you know, graduate with honors here and uh, earn as many space credits as I can, you know, by assisting the beings that are here and their expansion. And so, yeah, it's great. It's great. I'm like, I can go anywhere with this. I know anybody who's familiar with my message, you know, it's like, <laughs> I can really go anywhere with this. So I always, you know, look for the guidance as to, you know, what, where we want to dive in at and, and, you know, what feels comfortable in the space. You know, it's obviously, what is it today? It's, two, it's Thursday. So, you know, we've got Jupiter going on as far as the energetic movements and the numbers and all that kind of stuff. And so I pay attention a lot to that now. I think in my neophyte days, I was really way more haphazard. Like I just, you know, I do it like I want to do it, you know, the rebel, the maverick. And, uh, and now because of learning so much about nature and the cosmos and my body and all the ancient knowledge that was tied into that, I really have a lot more uh, respect for when you're writing with the sails, like when you're just using the sails on the boat, you don't even have to engage the motor. But if, you know, if you're trying to go upstream or you're trying to go in your own direction, now you got to engage the motor. So now you need fuel. Now you need all of the, you need the motive and all of that other stuff to get you going. And, and I won't say that that I don't have to tap into that because it's just like sustainable power. Every now and then you got to turn back on the, re the real stuff because you're suffering and dry. But I'm working more consistently and those that are around me are working more consistently on uh, allowing ourselves to stay in the cosmic force and the cosmic energy that's moving through. So that way we just use ourselves and we already know that we're going to eventually hit every place anyway in this 360 degree cycle. We're going to visit everyone. And so there's no rush. It's just about being here in this moment and being able to uh, really absorb and share as much as we can uh, in this unique space and time. So I'm always looking to dial in that way. Yeah. Um, I mean, as above, so below, you hit it on the head there. Uh, what's going on on the cosmic levels going on inside of us. Yes. And you, I guess what you're trying, what you're really explaining is the flow, right? Just going in the flow and understanding, like we try to fight it all the time. It's our, it's our ego and it's our Enneagram, Enneagram program that we come into this uh, reality with. But I think, you know, the masters, that's what they're so good at, you know, and we look at martial arts and we look at, all these other great practices that we can get into from breathwork, yoga, Qigong, et cetera. And it's all about getting into the flow and just going with the rhythms of nature. And yeah. um, I think uh, it's, it's never been more important than really just tapping into that energy and into that flow, not only on a collective, but also as we talk about our own individual sovereignty, because that is going to free us to really have the experiences we need to be able to grow and to be able to, as you say, graduate with honors in this classroom for sure for sure absolutely like uh like i said the journey itself you know the map is not the terrain so you know the, how that plays out every single day you know that's what i call the balance because you know we jump in with the intentions to do what we you know are supposed to uh, be doing to to benefit ourselves as much as possible and stay in balance but it's an everyday thing right so i, don't, I can't say i win that that battle every single day 
Um, but I'm starting to eliminate the enemy. And that's a whole nother aspect of the consciousness and what the consciousness can be morphed into. Um, and, and that's actually a appreciation for the entire experience, you know, just in understanding what the overall goal is and even tasting the overall goal uh, when you go into certain spiritual states. So, you know, like let's say even Nirvana, like you, when you're starting to taste that, you can't actually feel anything. There's no more differentiations. There's no more light. There's no more dark. There's no more any of that. And, you know, it's interesting because if you fully activate it, you can't really come back into this. It's like you having a situation happen in your life that you'll never be the same from again. And so because of that, you know, I, I start looking at life more now is that, you know, even the sadness, <laughs> you know, you'll grow to appreciate how the sadness brings joy and you'll grow to appreciate how this whole thing is really configured, you know, from the, the yin yang components that are within it, because the graduation component, when you're out of the body, there's no more governors, there's no more organs, there's no more celestial bodies, there's no lower uh, there's no anything having uh, effect on you. Now, you know, it's like you can't even explain what that's like. And I talked about this in a, in a recent um, show that I did, but it's just like, enjoy this now, <laughs> you know, enjoy what you have now, even if it's not necessarily what you think is having a great time, because to have the great time, you also have to have the bad time. And then you're calibrating this so that you can figure out how to really start working with that, that in between. And, um, and so, yeah, you know, like I, I know you talked about crypto a bit and, you know, we see, you know, the markets, you know, <laughs> doing something over there, you know, it's kind of always cautious about, you know, what's happening. But, you know, just overall, like we saw even CES 2020, you know, we see this idea that that's continuously coming forward. Like I see this communal energy pouring through everything and you will always watch every industry gets involved. This is why I really see knowledge is universal. I see people as also being kind of tied into a bigger machination that says, yeah, do this. And then they kind of do it their specific way, uh, whatever their uniqueness is based on their fingerprint. And so I see these companies such as, let's say, I guess that's Toyota that's building a, a, a new autonomous city. I think the other one is Astara or Estona or something like that. And it was already built out there in Afghanistan. And so we just see this, this new thing emerging where it's like, it's, it's as big as a, a, a smaller nation or a smaller city, but it's not everybody collectively. And I think that that is still the, the path of where we're ultimately going to get to where there's a more of a, a template that all of us start using with what we're creating, and what we're designing and how we choose to connect with each other. And, uh, yeah. and I think one of the most important aspects of all of that, just from my personal past and experience is learning how to communicate. Uh, and, and learning self, learning self first and then learning how to communicate because you can get on a big project or a big co-creation and totally have it fall apart, even 70% done, 80% done because of disagreements with personalities and, and this kind of stuff that goes on and, you know, just when you get people together. And so I kind of agreed, especially in life, that I wouldn't really jump into any more major ventures, especially with others until I figured that out because it just kind of seemed like a waste. And so, you know, I was happy to really start finding um, systems that were ancient that started really letting us know, at least for the body ID, I, I heard you mention Enneagram. Uh, we have you know, one that we call Enneology, and then there's Joydish Numerology, and there's other systems that have come out. But, you know, just, or just diagrams to if 80%, or let's say 70, let's just be cautious here, 70% of what you're about, how you act, what you do is already written. <laughs> You know, at first it's kind of like humbling because you realize maybe then most of you is not so unique. But then it's also very refreshing because you get a chance to actually start on what you need to be focusing on versus what all everybody else needs to be functioning with and focusing on. And, um, and so that's what we're doing now is that we're, we're pioneering because it's also 2020. So how are you getting that information? Is it a push notification? Is it something you're sharing with live people? Is there a private operator for you to discuss your personal problems? So how that all rolls out is actually something that we're working on now, but we see it as very instrumental to being the glue to these uh, aspects and um, what I would say is desires uh, and endeavors that we all want to embark on. But this has been going on since Mount Shasta. <laughs> like I, I have this really refined way of looking at the past and seeing how much I can extract from there before I start working on what I'm doing now. And so when I had an opportunity to spend a lot of time just personally and examining the conscious community, myself, everything, one of the biggest things that came up is how long we've been working on uh, this community, 
and, and many of our aspirations dealing with the government, sovereignty, land, and all these different things. And I think Bear is, is, is coming also from, from that background of realizing just how long we've been, you know, waving this flag or our own conscious community flag about what we want to do. And because life is short and, uh, you know, no matter how many of them you have, I always, I kind of function in a way where I, I kind of like, uh, I like functioning with the fire behind me. I like, well, you don't want to end up like that. And, you know, one of those is you don't, for me, is you don't want to end up working on something all your life and then getting this tunnel vision to what you're working on. And then somehow in the end, you don't end up achieving what you set out to do. And, uh, and if that could be caused by your just lack of oversight. And so now I'm, I'm just looking at, you know, our connection with each other. I'm looking at the community. I'm also seeing how big commerce, big industry always is diving in. You're seeing uh, even mindfulness. You know, it's like a $1.2, $1.8 trillion industry. It's worth actually more than crypto is, uh, especially right now. Uh, but that there's this mindful movement that's happening. And you see others that are already acclimated to just the whole marketing machines and how to get that going, but still that same, like, okay, are we just going to repackage this and do the same thing over again? Or are we really going to get some change and how are we going to bring that change about to where it's going to be beneficial for everyone? So yeah. again, I, that's uh, what I got can, going on. The infrastructure I think is important. You, you're mentioning like, was it Toyota or somebody coming in and creating these uh, smart cities or whatnot? I think what's the big revolution and as one, we're seeing this conscious, uh, you know, revolution right now with all this amazing development on platforms like this, where people are talking about these things in a massive way and people are working on themselves. Like, yeah. you know, people are really are into this right now, which is important. That's part of the equation, as you were saying. But the other part, I, and what I say, what I'm really into is the idea of open source everything. The idea is that we don't need patents anymore. We don't need these control grids over ideas. It's all about abundance. It's all about sharing and cooperative, being cooperative and having these systems built where we don't have these corporate entities that are based on profit running these systems, but we have, we're, we're taking these ideas of consciousness and we're applying them to business in a way that's more holistic and more true to how humans really are, that we are creative forces. We're not meant to be in a nine to five job in, a, in an office. We're meant to be out creating and finding our, our true kind of uh, path in life and that can actually lead to way more profits and way more abundance and way more, you know, evolution in terms of growth and all that. And that's something that Bear and I talk about a lot, what we try to uh, really embrace with our own business and, and what we're doing with Alpha Vedic. So yeah. I think that's a massive step that is slowly starting to happen, but we're going to need massive change. And it might be something of collapse at first to make that happen. But these corporations with the patents and the honey traps that come with that, and yep. all of this control, it needs to go bye-bye. Yeah. One of the yep. key obstacles <laughs> now is uh, technology because technology, even though it, it provides certain conveniences, um, you know, we use technology in our circles right now where the technology uh, does not require electronics or computer interface, but it does require an interface with your consciousness. And this, uh, I don't want to get too technical into it now, but it allows the operator to merge with a real technology that actually is in use in medicine. Uh, something just flew across your screen there. <laughs> Looking at that. <laughs> oh, is it? Uh-oh. Uh, but anyway, um, it, you know, the technology is actually a consciousness interface, and it's used in use by engineers, uh, medical doctors. So this isn't just sort of a new agey contrivance it's actually something that can be validated but what we're uh, being led to in the outer world is of course part of the technocracy is using technology against us where we don't have any interface with it other than a reliance or a dependence on it and i believe that's where we're being led but in other circles which i happen to be personally involved with there's a whole different level of technology. And you mentioned, uh, and that's really where we need to go. It's, it's about blending the two together. And, and you know, we're talking about ancient practices uh, you know, that always taught us uh, in the martial arts that I've been involved with in a long time, uh, you know, to keep your head in the clouds, but your feet on the ground. And uh, I believe uh, I saw you make a reference in one of your dialogues uh, about uh, Nassim Harriman uh, you know, in the event Horizon. 
And what he did was real special in that he plotted the resident force fields of all life from interstellar down to, uh, you know, cellular at our level or even what we would call atomic level. And uh, he plotted those energy fields on an XY axis and man uh, happened to be right smack dab in the middle. And, uh, you know, when we look at those cosmic forces and the grounding forces of the earth and the fact that, you know, even in our own bodies at what we call uh, martial arts at Don Tien, where we move from our core, that's mm -hmm. where we bring those uh, two energies together to stay grounded and make everything happen. And yeah. so, you know, we have a lot to learn from these uh, ancient uh, techniques and, and knowledge banks that were kept alive in certain cultures. But now, of course, like all of life from elemental all the way to interstellar, uh, you know, we're constantly moving in an ascending direction uh, through octaves in, in which, uh, you know, it's like a spiraling cycle. And each time we round the bend in a new ascendant cycle upward uh, and reach those different octaves, which is what the planet is doing right now. Uh, you know, now we get to remember, and I think that's what we're really doing these days. A lot of us is remembering some of these techniques, but using them to bring in the next phase of, uh, I don't like to call it evolution, but something like that. So, um, yeah, it's a real special time and, uh, we can apply this knowledge, uh, you know, again, technologically, personally, and, and also, uh, some of us are out there. Uh, trying to be the engineers of our own reality rather than uh, allowing others to socially engineer us. So any, any um, thoughts you have about that and, uh, uh, you know, just things you're involved with, uh, you know, to make that happen? Because I know you're practical and, uh, you know, like to make things happen and, and, and use all of your experience and wisdom that you've learned along the way uh, to that end. So, uh, anything you can share with us as far as what you're up to, uh, you know, on any of your projects. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I just uh, will speak directly to, you know, what you said, even in relation to Nassim, you know, the reality is, is that also we're, we're not really at the phase yet where we're just, we're discovering something. Cause I think even the word discover is almost like it was, it, it just got here. And uh, you know, there's a, there's so much of this, of the knowledge that we're receiving now where we're able to kind of put our, history and her story back together. And what I find like an overwhelming amount of evidence uh, uh, is, is that we're actually just coming off of what you would say is like a cataclysm. And so the state that we're actually seeing humanity in, you know, including even the, the governments and all this kind of stuff is, is really more of like a recovery phase uh, from the last height of what the existence was like as we were on that previous octave. And, you know, even this term technology is really a reference, like technique is only a reference. The tech itself is just a reference to anything external to us or something that we're using to, to aid us in this process of, of growth and awareness of, of what we can do and who we are um, to get us to a certain stage of realizing that the power is unlimited. So however you're going to try to bottle that up, it, it's almost like oxymoronic. There's a real paradoxical nature to this reality. And if one doesn't really get to grips with that, it's just going to be a bumpy road. And one of those uh, big paradoxical aspects of things is that when we're harvesting, when we're harvesting ourselves division and judgment, what it eventually equates to is, is that we can unlock many things, but we cannot like unlock the, the, the main thing is, you know, within the techniques and, and bringing the energy from the bottom and all and from the top and into the middle. And last night, you know, I, I was having this, you know, I do these, these builds and sometimes I'm talking to my wife about, it and then sometimes I'm just going on in my, my own consciousness. And I like it cause you know, I use it like a VR and I started realizing that especially with the caudacious staff that you have these, these two entwined serpents and there's so much that this is symbolic of, and, but one of, the main, one of the main definitions of it is actually the two variations that we deal with in the reality from, quote unquote, those who think that they're good and, and those that think that they're bad and how each one of them totally missed the mark because the bad people, let's say the ones who want to be bad, they immediately gravitate to that and they try to do that and they never get a glimpse of themselves as being, quote unquote, good. And then these good people they're so busy trying to be good 
they don't even realize that they actually have this bad side or this yang side and them trying to paint this life for themselves that they're just like the hero in the story is actually clouding them from being able to realize that actually to have the true power, real power it within self, you need to come to terms with both of them. So you need to actually be able to put this one channel yin and the other channel yang together or this one snake white, other snake black together or this bird and this snake together. And that is the big challenge because that's not necessarily something that someone can do for you. I mean, there's gurus, there's equipment, there's all these different things, there's techniques to be able to do it, but ultimately you are the one that hits the switch, right? So what I do is, is I try to encourage not only others to do that, but also make sure that I can weed out this nemesis because I noticed that that same aspect of things seems to pop up everywhere that now that, you know, it's like one thing is cleared up. Now here's a new thing. Now it's these guys. Now it's these people. And then I started realizing that maybe it's me. Because if I'm going to take complete responsibility, like as a creator, like a, as, as Michael was saying in the beginning, you know, this creation, we're supposed to be creating. And, and, and that's, that's one aspect of it, right? And then we got to sustain it. And then we got to transition it. And that's kind of like trans trimurthy, right? Like you got to have the powers of, of, of being able to, understand how to deal with all of those and so i find that we've got into the creation thing and, and we're well along on that and and now it's starting it's starting to reap thorns and thistles for us like if we're just creating children then we got a bunch of kids out there but if we don't know how to sustain them then now this creation it's like a father who just runs off with the creation like uh, runs off from the creation like god is like missing right and so the reality is is that i started seeing that we got this creative component down now this sustaining aspect of things must come into play. And that takes a lot of compassion because as a parent, you witness generally the child and, you know, as being a father myself, you witness the child do stuff like that is just totally what we were perceived, especially in our consciousness is off, like even demonic somewhat. But we start realizing that that, that is that we first of all recognize that that trait was within us until <laughs> society decided to tell us that that was the bad one. And then we also start seeing that this is like a natural process, especially if you hang out at a school, because even a conscious school, you know, because some people say, well, yeah, it's going on at the public schools, of course. But even the conscious school, you watch kids do stuff like, okay, he's not getting it. Johnny's not getting it. And then you, you start realizing, well, maybe you're not getting it. Maybe what's happening is, is that, you know, you have to be a little bit more flexible with your reality of what's actually happening here and how this was put together in the first place. And this, of course, is me talking to myself, right? And so I started looking at the machinations of what put this reality together. It's multiple layers, which metaphysics does a really great job of explaining to you. And then maybe, you know, again, a little UFOlogy will let you know kind of like the last cedars of this particular system and, you know, where we are at this point. And then you see still like within yourself, just as we can see with children, the drama, which I call the dragon mother, the dramas that happen anyway within just a family structure, structure like the jealous uncle, you know, when the, when the father, when, when your father is a king, and so that obviously means that his brother didn't become king. And then the father is ready to leave his throne. And this is, of course, just in a patri patriarch. The father's ready to leave his throne, wants to give it to his son. But the uncle's like, well, shit, I was, didn't get king in the first place. So if he leaves, I'm going to kill the son because I'm, I'm going to take that time back and be king now. And so it's just like realizing that there's this human nature, if you may. And it's really just nature. I wouldn't even call it human. You know, this nature itself and how to work with this nature and start to realize what's going on really in the cosmos, because that's where things take place first. And then instead of being jacked in as like the as below version all the time, like I'm just like a shadow or a toy soldier acting out what's going on in the big picture, let's say, starting to take that responsibility, like I, I created this. And now as a creator, I got to accept, you know, what went well and what didn't go well, because anytime I'm like in a laboratory anyway, like I work in engineering a lot, I'm always building stuff, 3D printers and this kind of stuff. But when we bring a new machine in, we look to make mistakes first. Nobody is actually imagining that this machine is going to be perfect out of the box. We print something first, see where the offset is, and we start making our adjustments. And so reality kind of has us on these notions that are completely false. And this is, of course, fed to us by the society that we're living in. And, and some of these notions are also this, this, this one about that we're supposed to accomplish everything when we're young. It's like, oh, man, when you're young and you hear from everyone, when you're young, you should be able to do this and you should do that. But relatively, you can't do anything because you don't have the experience. 
And only until you actually reach a more matured stage will these things start to become applicable for you. So also, if you're aware of that, then you're not trying to like overdo yourself, which you can get in trouble. You can strip your own gears. You can, you know, uh, make things happen for you in a negative way that you can't even recover from rapidly. If you just really knew that it's going to really be the latter form of your create your creative experience here on the planet that you're really going to get into this and that you're not really going to feel or get old unless you project that on yourself and that you need to actually spend the time in exploring the good and the bad, the black snake and the white snake that's moving through your body. And then watch the reality from even the racial divides and how they act out in these subsets <laughs> in order to hold that space and that vibration and that frequency, which is their purpose and the universe loves it. There's nothing that the universe is like, we got to stop that because that's not even how it functions to begin with. And then moving out of uh, this childish nature. And like I said, then gaining that ability of saying, okay, now I'm going to be a part of the continuum. (laughs) I'm going to be a part of what, once we get to, uh, uh, once we start this awareness of, uh, of seeing what's happening, start building and implementing these different tools uh, that actually work for us in the time that we're living in. And so for me, when I was able to see that other aspect of myself that I didn't want to see, and, and, and it starts to, uh, in society, make us feel uncomfortable with ourselves to admit that we have these sides, it was only then that I could actually assess my total power and my, my uh, personal, let's say, history ancestry but on a a dinonucleic or astral level like I, I was let inside of it because you know the joke's kind of on the human beings at this stage like if we can't see already that the body is more complicated than anything that we've ever produced thus far we need to be comfortable with realizing that whatever put that into play also is aware of what is actually going to continue to happen with the human experience. And then, like I said, this is a step-by-step process because then, the, then that final phase is, oh, I did that. There's no what came first, the chicken or the egg. It's like, all right, so I'm the one that created the language. I'm the one that put the world together in division. I'm the one that exists in division. So why am I doing this? And it's because we're stepping down. We're actually making this like a making infinity like a bite-sized morsel the most difficult thing to do is to to uh, basically do something that's impossible a real impossible feat and death is impossible and yet we seem to accomplish it it's like putting a, a lion and a snake together which is a cat it seems to be impossible the level of quarrels you would get the amount of improbabilities you would get the level of technology and the processing that would be needed But yet we accomplish it. So I I roll with that force. I take that same awareness that our ancestors gave all of us. Like I said, I love to see everybody in the melting pot. I love to see lots of seasonings added and gumbo. (laughs) And then I feel like that if the worst thing that can happen here, which is death, somebody gets killed, which is an illusion anyway. It's like Mario Brothers. You blink for a minute and then you come back in again. Now we can kind of ease into the skin a little bit more and, and start realizing, you know, how we exist as all of these things. And what we're really looking to do is actually bring it into harmony, which is like the center column of the caudacious. So that's what I'm saying. It's like that step-by-step process though. Like I'm good. Oh man, I'm evil too. I guess I got to end up accepting that. All right, I'm good and evil. Now what? Ah, oh, steam. Now I can put myself into this balance. And then now I can, I can grow from here. And I think that that's, that's maturity. Like I'm sure what I'm saying, you know, resonates because that's the, the difference between, uh, let's say the immature, you know, whatever that subset would equal to. And then the mature, like, well, I've seen this now based on experience. And instead of me scarring myself up, you know, I'm the bad one. I'm the wretch. I'm the evil one. We do it all wrong. We're never going anywhere, which is actually a solar mentality. Like a lot of people don't understand that they love the sun so much, but the sun is really the Inus. It's, it feels alone. It's the only one. The same thing they sell in the tradition of the sun God. And what that also creates, though, while it creates in, innovations like the uh, Zoroastrian tradition, which is like the origins of that, even the solar calendars that we're using, it creates innovation, it creates change, it, it produces results, but it also has these drawbacks. Just as the, the matriarchal, which everybody wants to go back to because they just love, love the whole thing with the divine feminine and all that, they want to go back to the matriarchal, but they don't realize that if you go into a matriarchal scenario, even right now, because you can go and visit Alkiblan or Africa and you can see matriarchal societies that are still running, if you participate in anything, even dinner, a ritual, anything, if you do one thing out of line, 
oh my goodness, it's like you just, you may be banished. And it's because <laughs> that one is a lot less conforming. So we have a conforming one. And then of course, it's a lot less conforming because everybody is synchronized. That's like the lunar aspect of things, the moon. Everybody is, is synchronized into that system like nature and, and everything is running on instinct. And that, and that works really well, except for when you're trying to innovate and trying to change things and bring something in that's new. So like I said, I, I, I see now that the entire existence on the physical planes, as far as the divided worlds, the phi base worlds, et cetera, you can always put them to, into two categories. That's it. And even creating more categories is, is not even necessary. And what we're really doing is, is that we're in this experience and we're learning the process of getting ourselves prepared for total unity. And, and total unity is a bit more, it, it's everything. It's not a bit more, it's everything. And so it's like, how, how do I even go through the process of preparing for being infinite? Like even somebody who's took in certain substances, DMT, ayahuasca, at a certain point, especially for your first time, you want it to shut off. It's like, oh shit, this infinity is not like I thought it was. This is scary. This is dangerous. I don't know what I'm doing. Get me out of here. And I feel like that, and there's a very, there's a seriousness. It's like you're in the back room and anything you do back there is going to affect you at least, if not everybody else that you're around. So you're very cautious of how you're approaching it. But then, you know, when you sober up from that entire experience and then you just take it for what it is, it's letting you know, look, you got this vehicle, right? And we're teaching you how to drive this thing. And this is your whole consciousness. Of course, we're, we're, we're spirits. We're not bodies, right? So we're, we're basically uh, bodies inside of a spirit because the spirit's bigger. But to get full reins over the spirit and to take off the governor, just like the car, the cars have these, you know, when you were young, they say, we'll put the governor on it so he can't go over 50 miles an hour. That's the organs. That's the archons. That's the planets. So that these governors are on here. So that way you kind of get to know what you're working with. And that way, if you also, if you run into a wall at 30 miles an hour, it's not going to be anywhere near if you ran into that same wall at a thousand miles an hour. And just recognizing that, especially the power hungry human consciousness in its neophyte levels would just destroy all of us. That it's that same energy that we're oftentimes saying, well, it should be free. And we're saying that it should be even free before it becomes aware of who it truly is and what it's really about. And, and that's a gross error. The, the depths definitely see that as a gross error in anything in life that you've experienced that actually has those components to it. You realize just how many mistakes that you can make being behind the wheel of something that's so powerful, but you don't really know what you're doing when you're driving it, right? And so I, I see that. I, I see that in reality. I, I constantly look for uh, these metaphors, these parables within myself and my own experience to be able to put as a GUI over life to understand it more. Um, because I feel like life is like the dream sometimes. There's so many things happening in there and you just don't even know why that happened. Why did he die? And am I going to experience that day? And there's so much confusion in there until you actually find these components that are like hard coded ancient principles, as Bear was saying, that you can fast forward through any point in time and still find the correlations with them. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like the video game analogy real quick, Bear, and I'll let you jump in because I know you you've got a million things to say on that stuff with all your understanding. But the video game analogy, um, where we we decide to tap back in. So we're we are this uh infinite consciousness and who knows, maybe we get a little bored with the infinite as you were saying on the ayahuasca trip and we're up there and we go, okay, I'm jumping back into that really dense, really um you know, that dense reality where there's pain and suffering and, and, but I can taste what a, what a good omelet tastes like or a good guava and, and have, have that rich experience. And so that also then I can, I, I can have that density to grow and, and actually not just be floating in infiniteness. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Like light, light versus heavy base versus high frequencies. And, and every, but, and then you gain this as like your, your alchemical cabinet. Because that's what harmony is, is that you use the one that is most beneficial to you at the moment. Uh, and it's because, you know, it's like when I'm working out, I don't want to hear like high pitch frequencies of 500 and, you know, 590 million hertz. I kind of want to hear some bass and some thump because that, that gets me moving, right? Yeah. But yeah. then if I'm trying to go to sleep or I'm pa passing on to another realm or whatever, I can't do it with that. And so it's about, well, my arsenal here. 
am I diving back in, you know, like the dive literally into the lower frequencies to, like you said, get into the story and get into the play and, and cause it's as above, so below anyway, right? We've all agreed on that. So I can do it down here. If I come into awareness of what down here is, then I can do it up there. And it becomes just a matter of preference because if I'm just in service of self, this is where confusion starts coming in. But if I'm in service to all as all is self, then it's a totally different thing because then I'm looking in like, okay, there's still cats in the hood. I guess I'm going in the hood today. Oh, there's still, there's folks up there all on, on Mount Altizaluf and they're just totally oblivious that people need help down here. I'm going to go up there today. And it's just like a, an awareness that, well, why? Well, because I ate from it. Like these are my brothers and my sisters. So that's natural. If we're all family and tribe, I'm really looking to get us all into whatever phase that we want to get into this level of awareness that this can be done. But if I'm like, if I only have one group, like a chosen group or a chosen, you know, a subset that I'm saying that that's the one, I feel like that that, that is, of course, a Jupiterian or an unbalanced Jupiterian mindset, which is the U.S. The U.S. feels like that it wants to make every single country a democracy and they're doing the, a horrible job about it. Not to mention democracy actually means something totally different than most people think it means. But just that aspect, like everybody is going to have to do this. And then when you see this, this movies, right? Everybody's got the same uniform on. Everybody's like, uh, uh, you say, so it's like, there's, they, they say, okay, well, there's no, there's going to be no differentiations here. And it's like, so do you see what I mean? It's just like, there's, <laughs> when they tried this out, do you know that there's already been a time in history where like what, let's say, for instance, the, the, the stereotypical, I won't say everyone or include everyone in this, but the stereotypical new age concept of where we're supposed to be. The stereotypical one, not where the ones that have, that have dialed in to really understand where we have to go. But the stereotypical aspects, there was already a society that actually existed like that during the times of the Zoroastrians when certain kings, because the whole land was being subdued, but it wasn't being done in a conflictive way. You could fight and get, your, get whooped, but it was more about, okay, well, if you guys want to live by those principles, you can live by those principles as, loud, as long as you don't interfere with this. And so they had societies that came up with like, this aspect that nobody should be married. You can have any woman that you want. Woman can be with whoever she wants. When you get out, you're free. There's no government. There's no rules. And what this society ended up melting down into is no one took responsibility. You actually had all of these kids that were being born and no fathers. You had so much stuff going on that nobody was taking responsibility because that's what was let go. And so when we see this, and that's why I like to like, let's condense this. How, why is it happening like this? Because it's an algorithm. It's an actual algorithm. It's the days of the week, the order that the days of the week come in, the planetary correspondences to those days of the week, how that actually matches up inside of our body. And each purpose at each day of the week, each, each uh, archetype, if you may, has a specific purpose. And just like a play, no one really overlaps. Like I don't need two of the same characters, but I'm gonna need all the characters. So let's say in that free society where everybody just does whatever they want, generally there's no eights, meaning eight is the number of Saturn. So there, there's no eights around. So there's no order. There's no wisdom. There's no structure. There's no check and balance. Now that's eight when it's balanced. But then there's the opposite side to eight, which everybody's aware of. That's the Satanism, the, the, the delay, the killing people, the death. The, the misuse of the secret knowledge and, and all of that. And they seem to be more familiar with that because that's what's being pushed. And that's the imbalance of being pushed. But it's like, but those elements have uh, importance here. And nothing, since there's koalas, koala bears, and there's uranium in this, <laughs> the creators of this space saw fit to actually include every single thing in this space for a reason. And so it's almost like when we figure out that reason, we graduate. When we fight against that reason as if we want to change it, as if it, we could change it, then we just kind of keep flunking out life after life. And I just found that also there's penalties to that. <laughs> and the penalty is, is that the more you, what I call scar yourself up or mar yourself, because a lot of people just, they feel like they're martyrs for this kind of stuff. The more you scar yourself up or mar yourself, the more division you start to create within yourself. And when you start division, dividing yourself and altering yourself, just like they say, altered state of consciousness or altered personality, when we reconstitute you, since we created everything, there's little to work with. 
it's not as much as even what we can put in a human body anymore for you to animate a human body. So now we have to switch you over to a lower vessel. These are the consequences of not realizing actually what's happening here. So it's, it's a great thing, though, that we all get a chance. Like I said, we'll eventually visit every single space. So we all get a chance to oscillate through what I feel like is the nine paths, as you mentioned, and then start realizing how we can become whole, starting to realize that how one equals two equals three equals four and how these blend in together rather than that one is standing there by itself. I'm the only one. <laughs> and then that it doesn't somehow slide into two. And then also challenging a lot of like even the linguistic structures. Like some people say, well, we're all one. Actually, we're all zero. <laughs> we're not all one because one is actually really means something. Archetypically, it really means something. And if you're describing that as off all being together, that's not really what one stands for archetypically. We're actually a zero. And through, we're all together a zero. And through these little slight adjustments, and that's why I said we're tweaking it. The body is already here. The, the planet's already here. Nature's already working. But we're here to slightly tweak certain things in order to just like a tire and every bit like a tire, you put that little bitty weight on an area to bring the whole tire into balance. And so that, that's what I work on doing all the time. I work on, you know, finding other variants in order to let others see that this is what's possible and, and, and what is even expected of us at this time. Because if you made it up here, that's why I, I, you can't really cast judgment on anyone. And I talked about this the other day, and it's because you don't know if they're going up or coming down. And I'll explain that because behold, the ladder goes up and down. When you see a person, they could be eloquent in speech. They could know lots of things about spirituality. We can even take me, for example. And some can be like, he's ascending. But if I was a supreme being before this, this is more of a descent. <laughs> you see, so I, I don't have that personal data about someone, so I don't know. And also, likewise, if, if they're just really getting on your nerves, pissing you off, it seems like they're not even getting it at all but they were a demon before this. This is an upgrade for them. So you, you can't really say where people are at and how they're progressing on the journey. You can only say that when they come down your road, when they come down your path, that what you're going to give to them is this balance. And it's not going to be from an instructional, this is what you should do. It's going to become from an example, like a template. I feel like even now with the sustainable communities and things like I put a lot of work in now on templating stuff and just getting, like you said, you love open source, getting it ready for everyone. So when I say like, I'll, I'll go to a community, right. And I'll be like, okay, so this permaculture is dope. So what kind of seeds do I plant to like get my first permaculture thing going on? And then there will always be like this, this moment where you realize that they haven't put that data down. Somebody that knows all that came in and just said this here, this here, this here, but they never really thought about, well, what about we, we just have a permaculture kit? <laughs> and then when I ordered the kit, instead of doing all of this hard, heavy lifting of the trials and errors that you as my brother and my sister have gone through, I can just start from where you are. Like what we do when we read books, this author could took, 20 years of his life trying to experience this. And now he's put it in one book. You read that one book. Now you have 20 years worth of experience and you can grow from that. So this is, you know, the aspect of, of how I'm coming into things and challenging myself personally to always stay on the level with what I'm talking about and what I'm presenting to others, uh, because that's what I also will want them to, to do for me. And so, yeah, I, I just don't want to, uh, to be excluded, you know, because somehow I, I didn't make the 144, maybe I'm 144,001. And then all of a sudden, you know, they're like, well, you didn't get it. You know, where's the compassion and, 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 and how does that work with our flexibility? So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Bear, uh, I'm, uh, I have stuff to say there to that. <laughs> well, Sylvan, I was just, I was just going to say, I really appreciate uh, being on your stream. I really feel everything you're talking about here. And I hope our audience is also appreciating that you're dropping a hundred little seeds along the way. You're, you're opening the door to so many conversations that I don't even know where to start. But uh, yeah, I love the way you articulate things. But we're doing the same, um, you know, the same thing though. Like I'm, I'm sure, you know, just even from an assessment of, of having that conversation with you before the call, like, we could go on about this all day because we really resonate with this knowledge. We know it to be true. It's nobody's personal truth. And it's like, Oh, I, I created that. It's like, come on, stop. <laughs> this is all something that when we're now harmonizing and 
and uh, sharing together. And but it resonates with us deeply, right? Because we have to apply this in our daily lives. <laughs> yeah. And there are practical ways to apply it in Chinese medicine. We have a concept called Tai Chi. And Tai Chi is that oneness. It's the void. It's before things get polarized. And then, of course, uh, you know, when consciousness creates that electrical event we call polarization, then you have the yin and the yang. So when you're actually treating a body, you're looking at those two forces and seeking harmony as a practitioner, you know, on behalf of that person. And also, hopefully, uh, not just doing things uh, on their behalf, but trying to uh, open their uh, realm of possibilities into ways that they can uh, maintain that harmony. And uh, when you look at the yin and yang and balancing those forces, now, of course, we bring in an understanding of the uh, different elemental forces that can have a particular effect on both the yin and the yang. And, and you work with those forces, which brings you to different channels and systems in the body. And when you're looking at things from that level, then you get to, uh, you know, closer to a place of strategy where you're, uh, you know, looking at different points that can uh, balance the elements that will then ultimately balance the yin and the yang. And when you're looking at those uh, endpoints of possibilities, you make your final assessment with an understanding that all of everything is holographic and certain points are a better hologram for, uh, you know, other areas to the body that you might be trying to achieve a change into. Uh, but it really ties everything together, our holographic universe, the, the polarities to begin with, the different energetic forces when we're out farming. We apply the same principles. We don't look at things as little parts and components. We know this is the simulation of electrical forces that we have a lot to say about in the first place. And uh, we balance those electrical forces just like when we're working with the body in order to achieve that balance of polarities. And of course, as uh, humans within the simulation, uh, you know, the, the ultimate goal is to get to that understanding that we are the Tai Chi in the first place not the polarities and and then you know to make things more interesting in the simulation you have certain parties and i don't look at them as good or bad uh no matter how horrendous their deeds seem within uh, because as we look within ourselves like you aptly say we've got both sides within ourselves and until you come to peace at the fact that you know you can't have one without the other and we embody both sides within ourselves so when you get to that point of peace and, and an understanding that you're the one putting the forces in play in the first place now that's where you achieve that tai chi so farming uh you know if if we are not planting and, and harvesting and and tilling the soil in uh in a way that coincides with the holographic understanding uh, and like you say, know that certain times of the year, certain times of the day, uh, days of the week, there are certain forces that are affecting the simulation differentially. And if you can have an awareness of that and even better align your uh, actual practices on the ground, you know, the real elbow grease in alignment with those forces, you just notice that whether you're treating the body or, or farming, just things work out miraculously better. And, and of course, that's the experience that you're talking about, I think, where uh, whatever your, your, uh, your chosen vocation is or your experience, uh, you know, you've got to put this information into some kind of practice. And we all choose to practice it. Uh, you know, that old saying, you do what you need to learn the most. So I, I have no, uh, you know, delusions about, you know, that what I do, it's, it's what I need to learn. And uh, it just so happens that uh, those things really bring things into a grounded way uh, where you learn firsthand that, wow, things seem to work that way. And then, of course, you get empowered in, in the fact that you're consciously putting things into motion, observing the results, expanding your own awareness with it, but more importantly, bringing yourself into that uh, state of Tai Chi where no longer, or, or let's just say less and less intensely can you you know, we all have our moments in both directions, but you, you just get less of an inclination along the way to be seduced one side or the other to think that yeah. there's a right and the wrong in the first place. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're spot on. I'm going to let Michael chime in here, but it's like we have a full moon and a new moon. So even when we wake up in the day, we don't 
always know what exactly the day is going to present for our energetic centers, but we just know that it's going to be different, right? So we can make those minor adjustments at times. And, you know, and also since we left this big disclaimer, like it actually leaves us open for digging deep in the dirt if we want to, you know, on anything happening in the reality or, you know, climbing all the way up to the top of the vault and even talking about what's going on up there because now the audience is, is fully acclimated that we're not coming from one space or another as far as which one's better, but we're like using it as a way for us to peer into other worlds and other varieties and aspects of ourselves. And then, that, then the last thing is, is that, because a lot of people may not identify with, well, shoot, I mean, I'm definitely not a, I don't know, maybe I'm not a Donald Trump. I don't go bomb and kill people, blah, blah, blah. How are you saying that I have that? And it's like really about our level of resonance, right? Like there's always like a little bit of that, right? And it's just like a point to point, like a Wi-Fi or node based system that, well, you got a little bit of that in there. And so that may not make up most of your personality and how you are but we all are carrying our own aspects of it. And if we put it all together, it would just become one huge thing. And sometimes people take on that whole form and it acts through them. And, but it, the harvesting itself and it's a point to point system exists within all of us. Right. Yeah. I mean, and it's really, what's great is once you have this expanded awareness, the fear goes bye-bye. Mm-hmm. And it's the fear, I think, that's the major driving force I'm still in this <laughs> reality. But yeah. once that fear has gone, then we can start playing. And that's what you're doing. That's what we're trying to do. Um, I think this is a good segue to kind of get into some of the things we're actually doing. So because I, you know, that was one of the things that really attracted to me when I discovered you recently um, is the, uh, as a technologist myself, jumping into the secret energy site and this is amazing uh, new community online community you're developing because while while we're all embracing the physical physicality of, of this reality and that it's important to get your hands dirty in the ground like bear was saying and, and grow your own food and go local and you know this 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 kind of idea of think global act local it's a cliche but it's it's very apropos for where we're going and i think it's really important so being connected as a global village in a way through technology, I think is gonna be extremely important moving forward as we develop our consciousness. To me, it's like the wheel before the flying pod, the wheel being the internet, the flying pod being us being literally mentally tapped in together and psychic. And I feel like that's where we're going, where we're gonna untap these ancient, this ancient technology, as you said, in our body, which is way more uh, expansive and, and complicated than anything we can create. And I yeah. believe that in the future, we will be psychically connected. We will be doing things that, with our consciousness that are far beyond uh, anything we can even imagine right now. But right now, we're still kind of in that caveman technology of the internet that's allowing us to do that. And it's not transhumanism that's going to be the way. It's not us putting the machines inside us to do that. No, it's going to, by being connected, we're going to figure it out and we're going to all come to our pure sovereignty and then go, whoa, actually I can doing these different techniques and growing in my own consciousness. Now I can hear what you're saying across, as you say, quantum uh, across the world. And we connect that way. We don't even need the technological interface anymore. But right now we're in that, that ground zero where we're still developing that. And so we have secret energy. We have what you're doing and you have what, like what we're doing and interfacing with like we, a permaculture guild up here. And, you know, you said something very interesting about the, then the permaculture thing with the seeds, you're, you're dead on. Like there's all this great knowledge that all these people have and how do we get that into a place and a great, um, I guess, uh, repository that we can extract from. And so that we can take advantage of everyone's um, own experiences. And that's where blockchain and all this new technology are going to come into play until we have the psychic database where we can just tap in and be like, let me know what Savan knows all about that. And what's great about the psychic database is that there will be no be more secrets. There will be able to accept in our hearts and love that we're all human. We're all imperfect. Imper- you know, there's imperfections everywhere. And that little devil demonic side you see in kids is in all of us. And we don't need to hide from that anymore. And it will help us grow and get out of these, uh, Sometimes we get stuck in these little corners of, of maybe self-doubt or, 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 you know, worrying about, hey, I shouldn't be thinking that. That's evil. And anyways, as we're all moving towards that, we have to make these steps forward with our hands, with our minds, building stuff 
being the creative force. And so we have secret energy. Do you want to go in a little bit about, about that and um, what kind sure. of led you to developing this and maybe talk about the mindfulness app too, because I know you're involved with that. For sure. Yeah. And, and it's just, you know, answering the call. Um, if I don't see something done, I mean, they teach you that even in, if they teach you this even in business that, you know, a, a good idea is what everybody needs, but it's not there yet. Right. And you kind of want to find that. Um, I feel like that there's all sorts of aspects of life that actually equal that same thing that you should get in where you fit in. I don't like to really be in someone else's lane. If somebody's doing something, I'm like, okay, I can go and find my own thing to do because we're all unique. There's so many things that are similar to us. I always say 99% ancestor, 1% unique, but that 1% though, meaning like we just go in on that 1%. And, but the truth is, is that, like you said, the temp, having the templates and, and having the ability to uh, deploy uh, these kind of levels of, of awareness for everybody is starting first with the blueprint, right? And, and this blueprint is starting to be expunged through metaphysics. I also believe that personally, there's always a counterbalance. Like when I study a lot about, um, again, ast ast astronomy, ancient wisdom from the ancestors, et cetera, and there's wasps here today. <laughs> So the ancient wisdom from the ancestors always uh, gets into the counterbalance, like Sirius, Sirius star system that one of the stars is always known as weight. And it's literally a counterbalance. That's why they call it, uh, that say it's so heavy that even an inch of it is more heavier than earth uh, because there's constantly these counterbalances. So what I feel like, especially in these realities, because of how they're set up, it's just like, it's engineering. When you look at a design and, and there's always needs to be a counterbalance, even if it spins down at a certain point, you're always trying to get it to be perpetual but this one has a little bit of entropy. So figuring out the counterbalances and how they play out in the reality really says that by the time that, you know, singularity starts to become a common household scenario because it's already here. Neuralink is already accomplishing that. Palantir systems are already online, but it's not something everybody is aware of. Just like organic consciousness is already here. We're already seeing each other in the dreams, even if there's a film there I'm even teaching people in the dreams. I'm getting that all the time from others that say, oh yeah, you showed up. I was on this journey, you know, using this substance and you were there talking to me the whole time. So we're already, already using it. It's just the same thing as with singularity. It's not out there yet that everybody is using it, but it's always important for us to understand that they both come to existence at the same time. So that singularity where man touches this machine, you know, they always draw they show the AI machine and man's hand touching it together is actually the, the going to correspond with the other singularity where we're touching that higher self or that spiritual aspect of ourself and realizing that we can actually create things with these same oscillations and superconductors and all that kind of stuff that actually drive uh, more potential into the human body or create a pranic type of wireless power, but not, of course, on the same level of the grids and the mechanics that we're using now with the, electro with the electrons, where, where we're just more getting into the, the elements like Dynamo Jack said. It's not electricity, it's chi, where we're getting into, well, can chi be spun up? Can someone that is almost dying uh, be grounded out in a way or laid on a certain type of crystal that's configured in a certain way to re-energize the damage that has been taken in their organic structure. And, and, and these technologies that that's like, I, I stay on the tip of fringe. Like I'm, I'm fall over the edge of the friends pretty much almost every week, just <laughs> with what I've learned and what I explore and what I experiment with. Because the other thing was, is that I, there's this notion that, even when you come up with a great idea that there's going to be people there to help you try to get that idea out to the world and nothing can be really closer towards, the, uh, towards falsehood until we get our industry set up to where someone is saying that is the best, that's something that they want to invest in. That's something that they're interested in. Um, and so what I had to do was, as I started to, um, as I was taught, like my mother taught us to, to make things like I know how to sew, you know, I know how to do different things that the average guy wouldn't know how to do because that was like the prerequisite of being in the household. And because of that, I was shown at an earlier age that it was one thing to sell something, which is like what we're really focused on a lot, like just selling a product. But it was another thing to totally make to make that product. And in the beginning, that didn't make sense to me because I would see, you know, people make the product and they would get paid these small amounts. And obviously, when you grow older and you see the books, you see that actually it's that person that's holding the resource and making the most money. But anyway, being brought up in that kind of environment made me go out and get the machines, go out and get the laboratory. And, and you know, especially these days, since, you know, a telescope that would cost 
I don't know, $10,000 back in the day is now like $40 on eBay. So it's just about also where we're setting our mindsets to, to do, because we can't do everything in, in the day. and We can't be a part of everything and, and think about everything. So we have to choose what we want to do. So I just started focusing on that and start seeing what was happening with the technologies. And, and ultimately, I ended up creating a chakra suit. I created something that actually can drive the energetic potential back into the body from sca scavenging from the fields that's around us all, meaning that there's always prana going through the air especially in nature and blue zones and that kind of things. And it would bring that energy and send that potential back into the body. And then the body would send the potential back into the suit. But the biggest thing that I realized is that probably nobody would buy something like this because <laughs> it's not a trend, right? So I started seeing that, okay, I got the juice. And also, of course, it takes money to take something from a, a, a prototype to a consumer version, which was a hard lesson for me to learn and very expensive, costly lesson for me to learn when I produced the world's first water programmer or consumer grade water programmer. And, you know, it's beautiful. It's shaped like an egg. You know, you can Google it as Phi Aqua and then got all the way to the point where when the manufacturer is like, well, son, there's a reason why you see the devices around you that are square, like the refrigerator and all this, because that's the shape we needed in the mass produce. But what you've created, we can't even injection mold this. We would have to like one off this. And after being $80,000, $90,000 into investment already on that, just realizing, well, this is another dream that I got to hang up because I didn't think it through properly. So I started grounding myself out more and more and more until I realized that what we need first is we need a unifying component that everyone's uniqueness, it's like the this, this standard consensus of just like what open source is. There's another value here beside money. We're saying that either this, this product that we're creating together, Wikipedia, whatever it is, is going to equal value for all of us, not just money, but applications, all sorts of stuff. So it goes further than money. And we're going to all lend our skill because each person has some kind of skill, like I'm a computer engineer and this kind of stuff, spiritualist, whatever. And then somebody else, you know, even woodwork and all this other kind of stuff. But the common denominator is we're not going to charge each other for that special skill. We're all going to bring our special skill in. And then we're going to use it to create what we start coming up with in our think tanks. And this started like three years ago. And this think tank, the first thing it stopped to kill was the money monster. Because that, again, is the elephant in the room. Like all these tasty organics. Even Costa Rica is a bit expensive. It's not Colombia. It's not Vietnam. Like it, it's pretty expensive here. It's almost as much as it costs to live in the U.S. unless you go off grid. So it's basically saying, well, we have a lot of brothers and sisters that are ready to make the jump. But they don't got the cash. And just, especially if you have a family, you can't just, you know, a lot of guys are like, well, shoot, I can't just put my kids out there and I don't know where income is coming from after that. I, you know, what are we doing here? So I, I, I wanted to answer that uh, call first, like, let's find something that we can start generating income and it'll boost all of us also rather than one person. So I started to, you know, go ahead. No, you go ahead, please finish. Oh, I was just saying, so I started to work with affiliation first. Um, and this was basically conscious affiliation. We were already um, at a certain point. Say how this all started. We, we started as a resistance, right? We even ranked number two on Google. That was even above the resistance song and some of the stuff that was coming out because the faction was like a ragtag bunch of, uh, of vigilantes that was ready to make it happen on this micro, on the metaphysical micro macro level. And there was not really an idea of becoming a store or any of that kind of stuff. So it started totally different. And it's interesting when you go back in and you try to repurpose that kind of thing into something else, because it's like it didn't start off in the way that it is necessarily now with offering all these different opportunities. It was something that we started seeing. Well, first of all, if I'm recommending these products all the time, it's not that I don't want to recommend products like cleansing products to other people. It's that I got to send them to three or four different websites just to get the whole thing together. So why don't we just make some agreements with the people who provide that we put it all on the site. So, and then there was the only prerequisite is it has to work. No fluff. It, this ain't no sales pitch. It's got to do what it says it's going to do. So we started with that. Then we ended up, let's say now there's almost like a hundred products in the system, all bona fide. And even us pioneering certain products like monatomics uh, because of their potential, but they're just not being an availability on it. And then what that got into was, is I started noticing that the structure of many of these affiliate organizations where the commissions were really low. So even with Kagan Water and these kind of organizations, you, you could never really sustain your income unless you were using that pyramidal, I sign somewhere up and somebody's always got to be the fall guy versus a, a horizontal or, or, or horizontal aspect where we're all growing together. So I realized that basically I could 
raise commissions, not take profits, but make sure that we don't take losses on anyone that wants to represent these products, right? So that opened up and it grew to like 1,500 affiliates. Like there's like 1,500 affiliates in the system, right? But then I started realizing, and this is how we work at this, like, well, if a person really knew how to sell something, they would definitely not be needing me. They wouldn't even need this kind of network because that's, I've been in high pressure sales when I was younger, especially in telemarketing. And it's, if you're a gun, which is what we used to call it, then you can sell anything. <laughs> But if you don't know how to do that, which is most people, you're shy, you're timid, you don't know how to ask people anything, you feel embarrassed asking them for, to buy something and all that, which is a state where a lot of people are in because even on their path, they're just not salespeople. How can we create something for them that it wouldn't even be like they were selling, but they can go to sovereignty? And that's where we created what we call unobtrusive marketing, where it's just sharing links to knowledge, information, not even the products, and that it, we take the responsibility that if a person comes into the site, they're going to enjoy things so much that at some point, if they make a financial event, even though that's not a prerequisite to being on the site, but if they make a financial event, you should get credit for that because you referred them to the site, but you didn't refer them directly to a product. And that was easy to do. And then continuously growing from there and saying, well, okay, we're still buying these products wholesale though. And that generally means off the top 40 to 50% it's got to go to somebody else. We need to create our own product where we can offer more commissions. This is the whole, this is how we work. It's like, if we can like offer a hundred dollars in commissions off of something that let's say it's only $300 to begin with, which is our next move and everybody wants it. Now we can actually get these people who are involved on to, with a, with a pay scale that they can actually start leaving their job. And then we added another level to it. Here's another thing. What, how are you sustaining yourself? We call this a uniqueness. The uniqueness is, should be how you're sustaining yourself. It's like a mango tree grows mangoes. And it can do that, especially if you see some of these mango trees out here in abundance. So much that mangoes are actually evasive. People don't even know that. Like at the, end of the, at the end of the season, right, there's so many mango trees. I even have to ask the yard, it's like, why did you cut all the mango trees? I said, look, man, you don't want, because once all the mango trees get on the ground, they start rotting and then there's other animals. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, all right. Let's just keep these 20 that we have, right? So the reality is, is that when you're tapped into your uniqueness, you can actually produce that indefinitely. However, how do you explore that? Now, a lot of people think they know what their uniqueness is. They kind of know that it connects to things that you feel like you can do. You don't even need to eat. That's different than playing video games. You know, it's like, oh, no, I don't need to eat. I'm good. You know, just anything that you start doing like art or you're painting and you just lose track of time, you lose track of whatever you need to, you know, do to sustain yourself because you're so engrossed in that and you can produce it at infinitum as long as you're not being worn out, right? So we started developing a, a, something to be able to unlock the uniqueness. And we're just rolling into this. A lot of the stuff that you see, even though the platform has been up for 10 years, a lot of the latest innovations, because we had to take down an entire site that I literally spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on, finally get it to a point where it was all working perfectly to realize that it wasn't going to work out for what we needed to do next and literally scrap the entire site and had to take almost a year to build a new one that was going to have that input output where we all can grow. And what this is really based on is, is that also we're in the future and to be able to produce something physically, even though we encourage that, let's say if I'm an artisan, I may just sell like bracelets. Let's say that's what I do. That's how I make my living. However, when we're talking about buying land and we're talking about, you know, doing, making some big moves, you're going to have to sell quite a few bracelets and you're going to have to probably sell so many bracelets that you don't even want to make bracelets anymore. It may take it out of you that you even like to do this anymore. Because that also happened to me even like I wanted to do this big thing for humanity and I work with computers really well. But after a while, I was like, I hate computers. I don't even want to do this. I mean, so that's what happens if it's not designed properly. So I started taking my awareness of how the industries work and saying, well, we need, you could create, let's say, instead of just selling a bracelet, which you can do, you can sell a course on how to make bracelets to assist those that want to know about that craft. And when you have courses, which are digital, this is totally different because one, it's always creating this residual income for you. And two, you never know when someone's going to buy the course. And three, once you make that initial investment of time and energy to put that together and you do your best in polishing it and creating value, it's, it's going to be there for you and it's not going to run out, but you need a place to put it. And this has been like a step-by-step -step process, but just again, realizing that, okay, we're in 2020. People need to create something that everybody's going to be able to enjoy, even across languages if possible. Then we need to create a place where people are going to be able to come and see it. And we need to also make it so that it's not just us trying to sell your course. It's all of us. 
that if we know that your course is even a little bit more booming than what I got going on, and I'm, I'm sharing links to your course because when people buy your course, I'm also getting credit for it. So we created this symbiotic ecosystem and this is what you're really looking at. And there's, it's like octopus. It has many different tentacles or arms to it, to what it can do. And people can use it for different reasons. You may just go in there like we're about to boot up GeoChat in about one month. Our chat just came out of beta. But cool. GeoChat, is like you just flip it on and you find the conscious people that are actually in your area. And you may just use it for that. Just you want to find out who's in my area that's on the same vibe as me. And so we meet all of what I felt like in this 10 years of me working with the conscious community and co-creating with the conscious community what was what I felt like we needed and how we can create something to where it wouldn't just become everybody's empowering seven and secret energy and what he's created. It would become something that even the strong, the strongest of us, the ones who attract the most, because this is sometimes a path thing would only boost more awareness to the others that are also inside of our platform that have unique gifts and have their own specialty, but may, may not be the, the, uh, you know, the, uh, what do you call that? The, the blaring microphone to the whole thing. And cause that, that's just not their thing. Yeah. And so that's really what you're looking at is you're actually seeing a, a, a ecosystem that is designed based on the principles that look at Etsy, look at eBay, look at Facebook, look at YouTube. First of all, they only do one thing. And I can't ever say that we would get it down to only doing one thing I wish, but they understand certain principles that actually you see in math and you see in other aspects of life. And that's one, like with Facebook, Facebook doesn't post content for Facebook. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why Yahoo lost because Yahoo was trying to curate all the content. Facebook said, shoot, just bring your friends here and you can see what your, your, your friends, actually it starts with communication <laughs> because how much, like if you ask, ask Bear, how much did you use to pay for a long distance telephone call? You know, like 15 years ago, it used to be like one of the things where it's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that I'm paying so much for this, but I need to contact my people. So Facebook, they kind of put the video phone, they put the text message, they put all that stuff together and it solves that minimal aspect of let's, I want to communicate. I want to have friends in London. I want to have friends in France, but of course they're exploiting all of that right now. And that's produced a situation where, you know, you got a lot of people there. They can't leave because they need that communication tool. But for us, we need to be aware that the reason why people are there is because they want to communicate. And we do have a big advantage as being the conscious community because we can easily say, well, the real power is in numbers. Like, look at WhatsApp. I'm still yet to get charged that $1 that WhatsApp saying that it was going to charge once it became big. I think WhatsApp is now Facebook. And it's just because people don't understand that WhatsApp is actually taking every single conversation and feeding into machine learning to learn how people function and what they do. And that's all closed source. That's not something that they mentioned to everyone. That's not something they even have to mention to everyone. But the goal is everybody is using WhatsApp. And the value is everybody is using WhatsApp. So yeah, I started yeah, realizing right. that instead of, exactly, instead of going for this low hanging fruit, like my in sale of what I'm going to make, it's about how many people can I get to use this first? Like we're about to launch Secret Energy TV and you're more than welcome. And what it does is, is it says, well, we curate the content to just make sure that every single thing on this network is on the level as far as consciousness is concerned, but it's free. It's not a paywall there like, okay, we're going to sell you courses right away and this is what we want to do. Like Gaia TV, where you just, you can't even see anything unless you pay. And it's almost like, you, you, so you, what our brothers and sisters have done in this community and even outside of it, if you may, is given us examples of what works and what doesn't work. What I do is, is I take that knowledge and wisdom humbly and I say, how can we do something better? How can we create something that fills in the gaps? Like what you're, you're showing right now is this is so powerful. It's almost like you don't even need to talk to us. You don't need to sign up. You don't need to do anything. And we have a lot of stuff like that. Uh, just, you know, to just give value, give worth, you know, show you that, yeah, we're, we're here to really assist you because if you go back in times and you ask someone, what are all the correspondences to the days of the week, the deities, the elements, the numbers, the colors, especially when Agrippa, Agrippa completely just dissected everything the wrong way. You have so many different correspondence and charts that are all incorrect, but this is knowledge about us. This is how we function. And so we felt like that we got to restore that knowledge. So we spent time, spent the energy, and then we started 
finding all those correspondences. Then we found a system that was ancient that already had all the correspondences. And then we fast forwarded to 2020 and now you can hit this cosmic energy tab every single day, pick the day of the week and you'll see the color, you'll see the energy, you'll see the herb, you'll see the essence. We have actually over 20 to 30 correspondences for each energetic each energetic value that hasn't even been put into the system yet. And we're just going to roll that in eneology. But what I'm saying is, is that the reason why we're doing all of that is because we realize that the greatest value is still the person. This is what the corporations realized a long time ago. And it's still like when we are upstart business people, like the new entrepreneur, if you may, they may, they don't get that at first because it's all about their bottom line. But once you start realizing that, look, we need to create things that people can come and use and that they actually benefit from regardless of if we know who they are or not, regardless of if they log in or not, regardless if they pay for something or not, you're going to still accomplish the ultimate goal of not only first, total ascension. That, was, that is our model. That is our directive. That's what we're here for. But in all of that, like this page you're looking at now, all the metaphysical advisors, there's also a network. It's crazy. <laughs> you have a lot of my favorite people in here. This is a very extensive. Absolutely. And, and here's also what we do with this. We, we don't just leave it at that. We also say, if you vote here, because we also kind of need a consensus in the community, we kind of need to even vote you on. Were just, you were just beat me to it because I was going to say you need curation. You can't just have it be, uh, you know, just th throw up every single thing out there. You know, you, it needs to be a curation. I think curation is so important. So how do you curate yeah. in a way that's not just you curating where it's like me, me, me? How do you do it where it's a communal voting curation? And so I think that's we what you're getting at. It. We gamified it because the reality is also, even if you add, you got a great product, right? But nobody wants to review it because people don't like leaving reviews. <laughs> that, that two seconds they could spend their day helping you out seems to not dawn on them unless they're getting some kind of incentive because they need to kind of know that they, they want to feel like, you know, that they were there. That's what we found out ultimately in, in, in our exploration is that people are constantly moving through things and they want like uh, just what you see in, in gamification. They want like that moment where, Ooh, what's going on with that page? I can take a look at that. Yeah, later. I, I love that. <laughs> they, they, I, they, I bounced out of that real quick. <laughs> they won't have to take that out because that's actually supposed to be working, but they want, uh, something where they know somebody says, hey, I recognize that you did that. So what we did with these directories is, is we put in uh, the gamification where when you vote for someone, whatever you do, five stars, one star, whatever, we give you the points. And the reason why we're, we call them ohms and ohms are exchangeable for anything in the store. So basically the reason why we gamify this is because we want to, and this is now running, it's been running actually for a year, but we're about to reboot this page, like reset everything and then come out again because this site is actually in beta, but it's almost out of beta. But what, we're, what we want to do is, is that we want to eventually say, let's say within three months, here's your top five spiritual advisors for the month. And also because we can't really exclude people from this even networks that we may say hey this is some bullshit but somebody may say yeah, well yeah. why isn't x y who why isn't deepak chopra there right and so but what we do is we let everyone else determine by their voting who they feel like is what's resonating with them that way as a community we can begin to say and decide okay this is the person that is on the level about that kind of information even that page right now is going to be updated within 48 hours it's something that the, our developers are building and it's just now since there's so many it's like an ever scroll especially if you're on a mobile device now you can we'll be able to click and say i just want to learn about wellness because that's the other thing it's like not everybody is coming to learn about the deep levels of the occult knowledge and underneath earth and the creatures that move about and all of this kind of stuff they just want to like look man i'm just trying to get some natural deodorant happening here so the relevancy is really what we work on especially with the algorithms that we have inside of our site um and then we create ways especially with the gui to say okay this is how you find exactly what you're looking for because the goal of this site is actually not to have a person sitting there like facebook all day getting cyber eye and all numb and carpal tunnel because they're sitting there trying to browse that's why it, it, it's a big part of mobile wealth because you can actually use it from your cell phone. You can drop a couple links and send it across and then you're done. And it's generating capital for you if that's what you want it to do. 
Yeah. And you're linking up because, you know, the newest trend with all the apps is really to link up. That's why the tenders, the meetups and all these different apps are becoming the top trending apps beyond the TikToks and all that is because you can meet someone in real life. And this was also when we listen to our community, they say, hey, you know, we're tired of seeing each other on the computer. We want to see each other in real life. That's why there's so many of us on the ground. And we're furthering that by saying, hey, instead of just a chat, because we baited that out in Discord and it was like a mess. You know, how do you, yep. how do you narrate that? How, I mean, how do you moderate that? Like, how do we even do that? And we realized, actually, you create a geo chat and it shows you who's in your area. It's based on resonance, like the, the things that you said you were interested in when you came in the platform. These are people who are also interested in the same things. That's who you're seeing when you want to turn it on. It's not something that's just on all the time. And then from there, you're able to utilize this system again to, to find others and to, so you can see like, I, I get sometimes long winded because what I did no, was, it's, it's, I, I it's amazing, man. I think you're, I think you're building something so special and you have been, you already built it pretty much. And it's something that is the future. And it's funny because me coming from a more crypto blockchain background, we're, we're building out potentially an infrastructure that could interface with this in a way that would, because we're all about gamification too. And I've, I, I've been working on with some brilliant minds. And one of, the, one of the developers is the guy who invented the smart contract, decided not to go with Ethereum because he saw it as a corporatization, centralization of his ideas. And he's mm. on our side because we're like underground. But anyways, the idea is I came up with is, is, a, new pro, uh, is a new form of um, what I call proof of experience which is a new consensus protocol that is doing exactly what you're talking about. It's gamifying reality based on human interaction and connection. So, yeah. so essentially you're getting rewarded by going out and doing things by yes. going out and having connections, not about just making capital off selling something that's, that's cool, mm -hmm. but actually you're getting value off your, your, the time and energy you're spending in connecting and creating and developing and existing. And yes. that is where I, I feel like the future commerce and economy is going. And you can do that in a smart way with the blockchain, with AI, with uh, decentralized autonomous organization, voting stuff. So the Absolutely. more we mind meld, the more we yeah, work together. It, it, it's a beautiful match in, 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 uh, in the harmonics, you know, for us to come together. And it's also like what I did was because when the, when the crypto thing went big, big, you know, I was there. In fact, I was giving crypto advice and I wasn't taking that advice. And yep. I was giving advice <laughs> on metaphysics. Like, okay, next is going to be something called Ether, something like this. And I taught this in my class, like when Ethereum was three or four months before it went on Kickstarter. And yep. some people even took that class and invested in Ethereum and they got some cash, but they never sent me any. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that I, I was mapping this out based on that. And what I decided was after I, I lost what I could afford to lose, because I also don't believe in gambling. So when I got into crypto, I really felt this energy that was akin to almost my awakening when I, when I came into my, my spiritual awareness and metaphysical awareness of what was going on inside of my body, like that, that wake up, right? And I felt that same energy being tied into it. I said, man, there's something up on this. And I got into it, but unfortunately I didn't have uh, the acclamation of a day trader. <laughs> so, you know, when it, when Hado was more of the mindset and I was there, I was, I was getting my arms chopped off and I lost uh, a lot of capital, but I can never say that I lost because it was my investment or my tuition to ultimately learning the bigger lessons like that you can be even become a bank and the power of the decentralized network. So what I sought to do even with this platform, because there was a lot of legality situations around crypto as there still is right now, is I said, well, Still, the basic principle of what we're talking about should be able to be demoed out in fiat first if it's going to work because I, I would still need to beta test this. And so that's really also what the platform is doing is it's beta testing the concept of if we did switch this over to crypto, can, will it really churn? Is there really value? Will people really catch yeah. on? And instead of me waiting on, first of all, because I needed the blockchain programmers, and then obviously you need yeah. to interlock the systems properly, and then the security issues, and then the banning from the United States. And I just said, well, let, let's get it going on in fiat and just back it up ourselves and use these ohms, which is what they're called, as our, our, um, uh, um, our value. Yeah, like whatever is creating value, our protocol, you know, you've got to yeah. be with the words but as the pro as the protocol and then just start awarding people based on these actionable points of mindfulness so right now there's about six to seven actionable points of mindfulness 
And, uh, and it's working. Like I just saw someone check out the other day. They had like $60 in homes and I was like, let me make sure that's okay. And then wow, I went that's in, cool. Oh, she did it. They, Very they cool. had that much participation. So, you know, but it, it, and it's just, it's a start because, you know, all of this stuff, because the most forbidding thing is the developer cost because they're still, oh, yeah. you know, someone has to, he's got to sustain himself. So I don't really want people working for free, to be honest. That's how I kind of have set up things. I have a lot of people that do volunteer to do certain things, but I'm always very mindful, like, but how are you supporting yourself? Because if you're giving me a lot of time, I need to make sure that that's, that's working for you. And, uh, and then we try to find ways to where, like, even open up Secret Energy TV, you'll be able to put your products on there. You'll be able to put your course on there. You'll be able to put your, 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 um, what, what you're doing as far as your station on there. You'll have your own page. And it's not trying to overdo or redo what YouTube is doing because you can't redo what YouTube is doing. It's like a YouTube smashed up with masterclass kind of yeah. approach. Well, where- and, and what you're really talking about is a co-op here. It's something in, it, here in Alpha Vedic we're developing. It's a, it's a cooperative where yes. everyone's putting in their two cents and their abilities and their specialties to help each other. So you have a network and really building towards a network effect so that um, the YouTubes don't matter so much because you have your own community with you, you can reach out to and get your information from. And yeah, YouTube will be there and YouTube is like cable TV now, you know, and it's like, but, but, but really that's what Alpha Vedic we're all about. We're developing this co-op where people can join and they can, um, they can get, uh, you know, uh, get involved in, in any way that they feel fit. And I think that's a great model moving forward. And I think Absolutely. you're, you're spot on with what you're doing there. Absolutely. So one that, thing, uh, going on. yeah. <laughs> one thing I take away from all this is that uh, regardless of the platform and you guys are really talking about the next evolution of, uh, networking and, and monetary device, but, uh, Bottom line, people are the engine of what makes things work in the first place. And the great irony is we have one of the more brilliant systems uh, that we could possibly think of already in existence. And we fail to understand that uh, there's some brilliant think tanks behind these institutions that have now basically enslaved us. Take the Federal Reserve System. You know, a lot of us want to abolish the Fed and, and understand all the grief that it's causing in our lives, but we don't understand what it's really all about. In 1933, um, House Joint Resolution 192 passed, uh, and what that basically said is now the Federal Reserve is going to operate as a uh, monetary and accounting system for all of us because uh, FDR, working on behalf of the Federal Reserve, uh, took us off of the gold standard, and that went incrementally, but that was the, the first big step. And so taking us off the gold standard, House Joint Resolution 192 stated this in so many words, since we are taking away your means of exchange, we have to give you a way to exist in an alternative reality. Otherwise, it would be likened to slavery. <clears throat> so what they did in that uh, resolution is they said, you are now the batteries for our system. Our monetary system is based on the full faith and credit of the American people. And then by way of instituting for the first time ever historically something called the birth certificate, uh, the monetary value was put on every new life stream that came into existence. And at that time, it was about $600,000 and change. It's changed these days to account for, uh, you know, all the different uh, inflations and things. But <clears throat> that gave us kind of an incremental amount as far as what, the, what they determined the average person would produce in a lifetime. Now, they also created an accounting uh, um, uh, clearinghouse in New York that still exists and still does this, where they keep track of the units of people's productivity. So based on whether a person is more productive or less productive, either way, <clears throat> House Joint Resolution 192 said, you now live in a pre paid status. That means since people are the ones that are producing, manufacturing, uh, coming up with all of the ideas behind everything in the first place, then you uh, in turn get to have your basic means taken care of 
and um, and in this prepaid status, uh, all your basic needs were taken care of. Now, according to this system, and this is the original design, this is not theory, this is fact, uh, you should be able to go into a grocery store, sign for it, and walk out with your groceries. Now, if you're somebody that has a little bit more uh, passion or ambition or creativity, and you create more energy units, now you will have more energy to play with in equal exchange, uh, you know, to fund your enterprise, uh, you, you know, your manufacturing endeavor or whatever you're coming up with. So in actuality, right now, we live in a prepaid status. That is the nature of our fiat uh, system. The only problem is, is out of sheer ignorance and disinformation, we've been led to believe that uh, we do not have the right to our own productivity and our own productivity has been weaponized and used against us and of course the people that have done this uh, have are now you know just like in the matrix farming us like little batteries and taking our energy and using it to create the world they want and to serve their own needs rather than the way it was originally intended so we could talk a lot more about how the Federal Reserve system works it's actually brilliant it would be the perfect crypto system that would allow people to exist without stress, have their needs met, uh, uh, taken care of, but at the same time, people that cared to put out more energy would get more energy back, which basically follows the laws of nature. And um, so I think as we're moving ahead, and, and like you guys are doing you know, more in electronics and, and systems that are over my head, I think we'd all really be served well if we studied what's already in place and take some ideas from them because there's already a great system. Uh, it's just been co-opted and used against us. So uh, if we realize that uh, we're the battery in the first place, and just like you're saying, uh, Savan, that you know Facebook and all these things wouldn't exist without us in the first place, uh, either with the Federal Reserve. So it's a matter of us getting smart taking our energy back and maybe even using the systems already in place uh, and, and using them, you know, to our aim. Of course, it takes a lot of education and it takes people being emboldened enough to, uh, you know, get together and work in a way that's already happening. You know, it's not a matter of us coming together. We already are together. We already are a unified force field. Now it's just a matter of us becoming conscious within that force field and taking back uh, what's already ours. So, and it doesn't have to be a violent struggle anyway. So anyway, I love uh, listening to you guys and I know you will be the future, uh, you know, to put these systems in place. And uh, I think at the same time though, we have to realize there are already systems in place that we could use right now. And then the ideas that uh, Savon you have, I think they're brilliant and the things that you're doing and those can interface beautifully uh, you know, for instance, with the Federal Reserve System. And if we had enough smart people, educated people running around, we wouldn't even have to abolish the Fed. we just take back control of it and then uh, creatively use it with all of our new endeavors. So uh, yeah. that's, I just want to put that out. One thing I, I wanted to definitely, while we're, while we're on that topic, is, is speak directly to is, you know, like just in being in the community for this period and, you know, there's, there's different crews right now. Like I'm seeing that even in the conscious community, there's like what we call the New York crew. There's the LA guys. And <laughs> these people have their own subdivisions and their own ideas of what consciousness is. And what I noticed that is the plague that is inherited from these groups that is coming from the same world or system that we've been using that's dysfunctional is the idea of competition and the competitive state that even males generally find themselves in females have it going on too. And it doesn't even matter if you put the title on them that they're conscious, they have this, they have this thing going on internally due to social structure, all these other things, stuff you have had happen when you were a kid and all that, where it's like, well, who does it belong to and who's the leader and all these kind of things that are still prevalent within the people who are supposedly quote unquote conscious. And, and to chime into what you were saying about older systems that were very refined, that we could just bring back into play and that they would serve wonders for us. I think that there's n no other, uh, uh, let's say, blueprint to how we should be functioning um, than just looking at the tribal setting. Because in, in relation to um, what each person in the tribe is going to do 
And it always starts off with first, let's say as a child, you are not aware, you're even trying to figure out how to use your hands. And so you're not aware necessarily of what your gift is. It's just that everybody around you knows you have a gift. Everybody is born with a gift. So then instead of, let's say, a competition where we try to even keep you from knowing your gifts so you don't somehow outshine us all, in, a tr in an ancient tribal setting, it's more of once we unlock his gift it, or her gift, then it's going to add to everybody else's gifts. Then the tribe is going to be a sum total of all of our gifts together rather than one person that has now the king or the serpent lord or whatever you want to call it. And now everybody is like, hey, how do we function? How do we move? And how do we, how do we even live and eat master, which is actually going on really in the conscious community. You're also talking about, you're talking to somebody who's been in this for 10 years and I've yet to really be invited at all to any major network that's out there. Even though people know my name, they know who I am. They know what I've done. They know what I've created. They know where I'm going. They see the creed. They know how we function. They know all this, but there's still that, that core haterism, if you want to call it, that is saying, well, if we bring Seven Bomar in, Seven Bomar may take away all of our, our, our clients because he's saying some shit that we can't say because we're still trying to sell it to you. And we're still trying to do this to, to with it. And so I feel like that, we're getting finally to that stage where we're going to take what we build. Cause let's take an example on it labs, Aubrey Marcus. Okay. Uh -huh. Now let's look at the whole prototype there, because when we look at the prototypes, we actually see the systems that work, especially if we can get something that's close to even what we're doing. So they start off with this product that is nootropics. First thing they do is they grab the Joe Rogan because they were all friends in the first place. They come into this endeavor because Aubrey Marcus already has the capital. His father has the capital to begin to create this, this affiliate product around this new trending thing called nootropics. But we still need customers. How do we get the customers? So we take these people that are like the has-beens of the athletic field that like your Wayne Gretzky's, whatever happened to him, everybody loved him, but he's not playing hockey anymore. Where is he? We call up Wayne. Hey, Wayne, do you want to, I don't know, create a little simple video or course on something that you're doing right now? Wayne's like, shit, a chance to be back in the game? For sure. And then it's always a snowball effect. Is Joe there? Oh, Joe's with you guys? Oh, shit, for sure. I know Joe. I know Joe. So then there becomes this cascading of everybody getting involved based on another person being involved. Meanwhile, Onnit Labs is growing their numbers because they're getting that 100,000, that 80,000, that 30,000, that 200,000, which are like the core groups of dedicated people that were still looking and checking for Wayne Gretzky and whatever he was doing on his Facebook or Instagram. Now they're this monolith where they have this influence. But at the end of the day, how much is Onnit Labs, for better or for worse, just something for them to look at their own prototype? doing specifically for the conscious community with the capital that's being earned. How much is Gaia TV at $30 million or whatever it is a month, somewhere in there, they're on the, they're on, they're reporting their profits because they're trading on the, the market. How much is that current being actually used to continuously drive the growth of the community in a symbiotic way where others begin to unlock whoever they are, the future of, of this whole thing that we actually paved the way for them. So I, I still have quote unquote beef, if you may, with the overall way that things are being run with the powerhouses that are draining much of the resources that are currently available in the conscious community because it still only has as an industry a 17%, 12 to 17% saturation on mindfulness. And that the lion's share of that is going to still these networks that can afford because they were most of them were media outlets before they even became conscious networks and they switched over to becoming conscious networks because they saw in their data sets that this was going to be the new trend and now That's it's marketing and now it's you know this kind of thing and so i feel like that there's that to to the, the community the conscious community has a date coming with that to where we have to begin to accept that even if that's how you were functioning before, that now together we're no longer going to allow this kind of thing to really go on without someone or all of us, if you may, saying that, hey, can we get one school for kids homeschooling where the money is being put for the parent to come in and to take this homeschool course 
about consciousness for their kid? Or are we still going to do a new earth where everybody is going to be looking at Sasha? And I'm just saying for all of us, this is why, let's say, for instance, that other people may not call me in necessarily because I have to call myself out like that every single day and say, well, Seven, is it all about you? It's never been about me. That's why we call it understanding. It's actually about you. You're the central character in all this. I'm looking to unlock your gifts because when you unlock then all of us, because I can't do this myself. Like, have you ever noticed how if you try to go into a big endeavor by yourself, you end up being the janitor and the president? <laughs> so who wants to do all of these different acts by themselves? But I'm, I'm just speaking to that for a moment, just because, you know, it came up in my consciousness about I, I wouldn't generalize yet that the conscious community is actually in a state where it's ready to utilize the protocols in which that we saw within the uh, within the Federal Reserve and how they structured their finances uh, uh, to be and be able to deploy that because we're still dealing with egotistical outfits that do still suck up the lion's share of what we're calling right now as the conscious community. And that day is coming where it's like where we have to call that out and say, but if there's no example, here's the thing, because the same thing applies for conspiracy. <laughs> if there's no example, though, of so what is the alternative, Seven? So what is the alternative to this, which we can't complain about because this is what we're using and this is the only thing available. And so I'm saying that as from, from what I said, especially if there's any of those guys listening, as from a level of constructive criticism, I'm one person with a heart and the compassion and knowing what my best is. See, I know what my best is. I've aced tests that were complicated without studying but one night because I knew if I flunked out, I probably was gonna get whooping when I got home. So I know what my best is. And I challenge myself constantly, well, is that your best? And I feel like that we gotta have that check back system with the community. That's why I created the directories and create these things because every time I go to my YouTube now, I'm, I have to see Mind Valley videos. And because I'm also in Latin America, I see the same video. They won't even change out the video. And it's like, but when's the last time Mind Valley, AFES, beyond these courses and beyond the stuff that they keep selling, has ever took the millions of dollars that I know that they're making and actually took a fraction of that and spent it on things that we can all benefit from? This is not what we're seeing yet. And I know that because I live in this. I breathe in this. Some of these people are at least one degree or two degrees of separation from being a friend of one of my friends. And so I, I can see this, them treating this the same way they would treat if it was a, 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 a car dealership, the yep. same way that if it was a, a, a holistic store on the corner, it's still that bottom line, how much I'm making profits. Also, here's another thing. There are people out here, there are beautiful beings out here right now that have a powerful message that will blow what me and you have to say away but they have no platform because the same thing that has happened to me and still happens to me is they look at my numbers and they start seeing what is the benefit of bringing this guy on the coast to coast. <laughs> he's in the, he's, he's known enough to create where all of our people will be going over there, but he's not so known to where he'll be bringing people to us off the list. So they don't even care about if you have something special and amazing to bring to the universe. They care about this number. And so that's what, if you're looking at secret energy and you're looking at what we're doing, that's the big change is that, and also not everybody starts off like perfect and ready to do this. There has to be that testing ground. That's why we have specialist training, which is free. Ambassador training, which is the premium for more intensives. And this is to get you in front of the people that are saying, yeah, you need to brush up on this a little bit more. Or I love the way that you're bringing that. Here's some extra stuff that you can use with it. So that's what I have to say about that. I feel like that the conscious community itself is actually the problem in many ways because we have created something that we can even say that we have, but we're not necessarily treating it different than what the standard industries and how they're treating their assets are. It's just they don't have enough money. They don't have enough control because if they did, it would be these guys as the gods <laughs> or these guys as the president 
And then us dealing with now, okay, well, you didn't actually balance your chakra centers out in the first place. Oh, you, you actually haven't even learned what breathing techniques are. Oh, you're just getting high on mushrooms and DMT and then treating that like it's a party drug rather than realizing the integral sacred side of these elements and these plants and what we're doing with them. So that's why, you know, at the end of the day, somebody has got to say as a whistleblower or whatever you want to call it, like, some improvements here. Like I can't actually blame all the time, you know, just the overall World Trade Centers and the vultures and all the stuff that's preying upon us when we have people inside of our own community equipped. They know but, all of the numbers. They know the metrics. They know the pay-per-click, the cost per minute. They got it down to 0 0.30 cents cost per minute. But they're still sending you courses rather than just knowledge and information or connection about how you can be one and how you can bring that into total awareness into into a community. So yeah. I just want to make sure that it doesn't go past the listener's mind to still be aware that we have a lot of power that we are not necessarily governing and using properly because we have gatekeepers also amongst us. Of course. And this same thing well, going on since Mount Shasta is where we have an involvement, even with the central intelligence agencies inside of the conscious community making sure this beautitude that we keep describing doesn't really start trending the way that it should well can i say when well i guess we have to define too what the consciousness community is and not let them define it right we're here conscious we're creating our own communities why do we have to you know why do we have to pin it on just a few big brands or big channels or big media outlets like gaia who through a partner of mine knows I know the owner of Gaia. He's just a guy, a rich guy doing yoga and just kind of making a lot of money and doesn't even have that much control over the content. He trusts in his producers. They're just a media outlet. But we we have I think we give them power when we call them the consciousness community. And I think well, new tech I, I, new I, I tech kind of make it differ only from the state of that the conscious community, since we're using devices like computers actually becomes keywords unfortunately yeah. But, you mean, yeah but i'm saying we're we're in, we're right now seeing seeing the p2p evolution the breaking away with the content creators being able to have their own platforms and you know i think that what you're talking about is so true and i think it's a reflection of the old guard fracturing and breaking and mm -hmm. those are the original maybe some of the big name brand innovators but they have chosen to be part of the old guard and maybe some will wake up and they'll see the path and you know, they'll move. And I do know the owner of Gaia. He's a, actually a pretty cool, innovative guy. And he just has a big monolith under him. And he's just kind of, like I said, he's just content doing yoga and Kundalini and breath work. And he's just kind of got this money machine under him. And it's just kind of the nature of what we were talking about earlier, the nature of the Fed and the reality of everything around us, how it is and how that's fracturing and breaking. And we're moving into these new these new mechanisms, like what you're building and what we're building. And we're the future of where that's going. And I think there's a lot of people out there that are resonating with that and are feeling that and are searching for these platforms. So it's good that we're talking today because we yeah, are. I, the I think it's a it's a necessary it's a necessary um, because don't get me wrong I don't think that many of these people sit back and think that they're doing bad things. To be honest, I think actually quite the contrary that they actually feel like that they're bringing a knowledge or bringing an information or making something happen that otherwise wouldn't happen without them. And I just think that also when and then when that happens, we all get more knowledge about how to what to do next. Right. So there's always a growth process. And yeah, I yeah. just feel like, though, since remember that time draws nigh, like this is 2020 and this kind of behavior it's been going on since Mount Shasta. This is not the first time. So and also even the advent of technologies uh, being able to not necessarily computer technologies, but systems that we can use like let's say for instance when communities are together and then they're all you know there's a share cropping going on and those kind of things this is all what's just being re replicated within the digital environment i just believe that it's not so much as the technique because the techniques have always been there it's really that it's that awareness <laughs> you see what i mean and it's at how much is this valuable how valuable is this to you to actually accomplish and do you understand what we're losing out on here? Like, do you understand how many children are not getting this and won't get this because of these kind of actions and, and, and what kind of a, a charge that we need to take in order to actually be able to ensure that that becomes a possibility or, or one of my teachers is, is dead now and spent 40 years of his life 
that was the latter part of his life. He died at 80. He spent 40 years of his life thinking that this was going to be something he saw with his eyes, yep. this beautiful connection between tribe and all this stuff and us coming together and enjoying things. And he died with that on his mind. But, you know, only thing I can do is honor him by making sure that that actually happens because I'm of whatever it is that I can do and what I can accomplish. And you're right. Now people are, now that they got their feel of that, they also have a greater level of discernment. Like, well, you know, this one's a little bit more generic. This one's a bit more original. I'm going to go for the original, even if there's not two zillion people over here. And so, yeah, you know, I just, like I said, I, I, I like to vent a little bit and just be like, yeah, but, you know, we see this as long as we all view it together. And then we charge ourselves, like, because, you know, we can't have people, like, when, when you get, let's say, like the Donald Trumps, and they're beyond reproach. You try to tell them that something needs to be changed, and then they're, they're like oligarchs. We don't want that in the conscious community where you're saying to a person, and I'm saying it's conscious community because if you push yoga, if you push meditation, if you push holistic products, who are you pushing them to? Somebody in there is conscious. If we, I mean, because at the end of the day, what does the word conscious mean? But we know that this word conscious community means a certain thing to us. Hashtag vibes, hashtag wholeness, hashtag. And, and that's becoming the precursor. And so even when someone's just doing that from a superficial level, where they're the youngest of us, they're still in a neophyte stage. And so we still have to 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 shape it up, to mold it up. Like, how do we get Montessori's? How do we get like Steiner schools? Like, how do we get any of this stuff if someone didn't say, here's a new prerequisite to what we should be expecting to achieve the results that we're looking for based on the experience. The experience, yeah. not on, I like you, I don't like you, you're with us, you're not with us. What do we need as a whole to really begin to grow? And, you know, one of the biggest challenges that are here for us in the conscious community is actually the children. We're still building applications and things to work for adults. And we have yet, this is like the movie Hugo, you like keep fixing this until you get old and gray and die because we're not going at where the actual issue is starting at, which is, you know, how are we going to create these curriculums for children? And this stuff does take resources. So I trust that we'll eventually get to the stage where we'll wise up enough to begin to, uh, to incorporate the proper resources and, and distribute those resources to the people that we know and the organizations that we know are really about this life. And that we will pay less attention to, you know, those who have gotten their field. Like, bro, I'm telling you, I don't have millions of dollars and I'm accomplishing all of this. You give me $10 million a month. <laughs> you yeah, see what I mean? So that, imagine imagine getting a half a billion in an ICO. Imagine what we could have done, you know. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I see this old play over and over again. But one day soon, it's going to happen. Well, yeah. Like I said, I, but it's Savon, with us saying something, you know? <laughs> Savon, I hear everything you're saying, and we face all the same frustrations, you know. And the frustration I have is that, uh, you know, I've been in my skin uh, about 70 years now, oh, and man. we were pioneers <laughs> in a lot of things. And all those things that we've been doing all of these decades, now we look around and we see a lot of armchair quarterbacks that are talking about it but have never lived it, experienced it. However, they're the ones getting the funding, the notoriety, the numbers. So, um, but one thing I have learned is that as long as we don't go away, you know, we've always been a half a step ahead of convention. Mm -hmm. And uh, for whatever reason, we had the passion to keep doing what we're doing. And a lot of things where, you know, back in the 60s when, you know, I was studying with uh, uh people from Europe who were the Steiner experts of the day and, and, you know, learning, bringing Asian medicine into the picture and, and all these things that are becoming quite trendy. Uh, you know, we were lone rangers. People thought we were crazy. And now we look around, yeah, there's a lot of people just talking about it and really don't have much business talking about it because they've never even done it. On the other hand, you know, words getting out. And what I've learned is as long as we, don't go away and keep staying a half a step ahead. And everything you're saying is right on. Uh, I believe, and there's good evidence for it, that there's a whole larger energy at play 
and all of these folks that have kind of co-opted things. It doesn't matter if Joe snubs us and he has all these numbers and, you know, and all the people come aboard his platform because, it, you know, same boss, uh, you know, is the old boss kind of thing. Uh, you know, and it doesn't matter if they're doing it consciously or just really focused on their bottom line. Either way, they have co-opted things, uh, but staying in that level, the half a step ahead of them, it's a matter of time. And we have the slipstream of the universe uh, to draft with, uh, you know, or draft into that is going in our favor. So, um, again, day to day, Mike and I have these discussions all the time. Okay, how can we take care of our bottom line? How can we get our message out? How can we share our real experience of actually doing things? We've adopted the co-op model. I hear what you're doing. It's just amazing. And there's a growing number of individuals like ourselves who are just doing our own thing. Maybe not as many people hear about us. However, again, we are drafting the universe and where things are already going and these other people that seem to be having more success in getting their message and getting numbers out right now, uh, they're really not in alignment with where things are going. So I guess my message is, is I have a very strong hunch that uh, we're in the right place at the right time and just have faith. And uh, it is changing in our favor. Um, you know, I like to study history and talk about some of the things, you know, like the Federal Reserve and everything. And, and I totally agree that, uh, you know, all those things weren't perfect. We're just pointing out that those are things that we can build upon, uh, you know, probably do better rather than building upon it. Just tear the whole thing down and, and institute it. Yeah. But anyway, you get my point. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I mentioned these things in order for even these people to, to not become complacent. And to feel yeah. like they're also beyond reproach because capital is capital. And, um, and we are all sharing this space, like as we share space in, in this world, but others are a little bit closer to our resonance. And so it's easier to get to them. Like, like my brother is saying, Michael, he's like, he knows a friend of this guy. So it's, it, it's just a friend's phone call. It's easier to say something versus if I'm going to try to get Bloomberg to do something for me. You know, he's not a couple phone calls away. And I just want these people to know that we are, we are in many respects, we're out of time. <laughs> like, that's the thing. We're immortal. So there is no time. If you're in time right now, you're already in trouble. So we're, we don't have any more time left. And when there's that kind of, when there's that kind of action that could be taken, I feel like, man, be noble about this thing and take that action because you're not just going to be known for the person who started this little network that you have that's making these millions of dollars. You're going to be known for the person that actually took those millions of dollars, which you won't be able to spin into anyway. It's, it's basically like monopoly, whatever you put it. If I own all the property on the board, wherever you put it, I'm going to get make money anyway, every time you roll the dice. So it's coming like that in the conscious community. I'm not sure if you're, if yeah. you're looking at the data sets, but I have to sit in these data sets all the time and say, okay, well, where is everybody at? Because of course I would want to allow them to get these kind of messages, even what you're presenting and what you're doing. It, it's, I take it the responsibility to make sure that, that, um, that others would be getting that message and how I can get, get it to them and on the rudimentary ways of just, you know, dropping a couple links and sending it to my local audience. And so when I'm seeing these data sets, I'm seeing these powerhouses investing twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a week, if not more, uh, into grabbing up the lion's share of the same people that we're talking to every day. And that's, that works. If that's the same outlet, that's also saying, and we're starting the schools, we're creating the templates, we're doing this, we're doing that. And so maybe even hearing this conversation is like, oh shit, they, they challenging it. Yo, go ahead and get, because they have also a lot of people around them that are acclimated to do this stuff. That's what I was really blown away about with even like the new, was that the new earth? Like there was a lot of, especially let's say the, the 40 to 60 year old a uh, female who's at home, has the time, not tripping off, you know, trying to make money or trying to appeal to somebody and just there to do that administrative work that it actually takes to create what is needed for these children. And so I'm just saying like, hey, somebody is watching you, the watcher is watching, and it's just all time for us to start holding each other accountable if we can. You know, I, I wouldn't, you know, I'm sure it's, somebody's not going to lose sleep over this and feel like they need to go and, you know, drop a carpet bomb because of it. But I just wanted it to be known that, hey, you know, we, we have a situation because we're in 2020 
and we're still looking to get off the ground with at least one of these. And we need kind of one, at least in our major continents. So I also know that there were some, um, there were some questions in the chat, so I can kind of quit my rant about just, you know, <laughs> overall <laughs> my honest, and, uh, and, you know, maybe address some of uh, what the listeners may want to know or hear about or wherever you want to take it. Yeah, I mean, we're running up on our time anyways. We're over we're almost two hours, 15 minutes in, so I don't want to go too much longer. Um, and, and to be honest, you, we kind of answered some of the questions. One was kind of how do we practically um, apply this kind of uh, sovereign uh, individual um, awakening to our lives. And I think Secret Energy and what everything you're doing really covered a lot of that. And then uh, another earlier question was, you know, about uh, the reset cycles, right? And if you had uh, any knowledge about, you know, the the great impact theory from 12,800 years ago and, you know, the, the physicality of the, the resets and stuff, because you had kind of mentioned that early in the beginning of the talk, how we're kind of still just coming out of great cataclysm. Yeah. And I, we're I going that with you- that. The check static and attic, you know, it's, it's mud, flood on, mud flood on this one. But, I mean, you, you have a large amount of accounts that um, we, we just went through a massive reset. That's why actually you find many of the indigenous cultures in the state that they, they, they're in. It's not just due to uh, colonialism. It's actually due to the state um, that they were in once the colonizers even came to their territory, which was generally in a degraded state where the empires have been broken down completely. Um, as above what we find happened is a complete disconnect where, um, you know, in, energy or power becomes divided. It's like the same thing that you see in the mitosis process. So, you know, we're, we're just fresh off of one of those. So we're just gaining our bearing, hence why most don't even know what their body is capable of doing and what is, what, you know, what can really be done and where they come from and what the story is and all of that. And so we're gaining that knowledge back rapidly. And even these technologies that we're using, the rudimentary computers and semiconductors and processors are like basic tech to where our ancestors were at, especially with the organic uh, fields and, and the energetic centers that we can use around our body. So I don't see 2020, you know, if the question is directly about whether we are going into a cataclysm, because some believe that, you know, that is the case right now, that we may be entering the three days of darkness and all this. I feel or that. The, at, or the uh, polar reversal that's coming in uh, 2040. Exactly. And there's always something, right? And so <laughs> I feel like, you know, bring, I'm always one of those bring it on kind of people, meaning we were trained to run into the fire, not away from it. It's just one of those things where I feel like that time doesn't really exist in, in yep. respect to those things. And we can cause lineups, as I mentioned earlier, and we can cause cataclysm. Like I've had uh, a, a apocalyptic event in my life before that I caused personally based on decisions that I've made. And then I've also had total full on ascensions, ascensions based on decisions that I made. So I think that it's that, that we, we don't really see like, even when we had the catastrophes, they, it didn't affect the entire world. So I also feel like if you trust yourself, you'll always be in the right place at the right time, the whole thing could be falling apart and you'll be standing on that, that if you were, if you were to make it through that process, you'll be standing on that little pillar. That is the only thing that doesn't fall. And then lastly, you know, one should not cling to like such a feeble life. You know, humans are very fragile here, you know, but to look to the life beyond and to know that you will never leave anything that is the truth because you can't, it'll always be there. And so anything that's the truth, if you feel like you're gonna leave something behind, maybe your pet cat, your child or whatever, it's gonna be wherever you go. And so ultimately just conquering the fear of death. Yeah, and- well that's, you hit it right on the head too. That was my always biggest fear is not death, but you know, and that we're all living our little, in our little um, hero's journey, right? In our own little film. And what's the worst? I mean, if, if there's a cataclysm coming, that's going to destroy the world. That's probably instantaneous. You're gone. Anyways, right. you could have way worse cataclysms <laughs> you, you create for your own life through yes. your own anxieties or depression, or that's way worse than like a comet hitting the planet. But, right. <laughs> but my biggest fear, and I've bear and I have had considerable dialogues about this because we get deep on our phone chats and our P2P chats when we're in person. That's how alpha cast started. Cause we go deep all the time yeah. is like having kids. I've got two kids like leaving this, leaving them, leaving. And, but through my journeys into, um, you know, ancient texts and metaphysics and all that stuff, I've, I've, you come to realize that 
that we're together in all this, that there's a reason why those, those little, these little consciousness guys are with me, that we're yeah. in this journey together and we're never, and time doesn't exist, space doesn't exist. So it doesn't matter. Like we're in this all together and we, I can, we'll always be together. So yeah. in the end, there's nothing to fear. And it's go out and have fun and enjoy life and embrace it and have adventure and go do things and, and embrace stuff. And there's no reason. I understand people suffer from depression and anxiety because of the matrix we're in, but we got to release that and we got to move forward and we got to embrace the adventure of our life as the hero, like I say, the hero's journey that we're all in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's a good way to end uh, the sure. podcast. I always like to leave it on a positive note. So yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, we could talk for 10 hours today easily, and I know what we got stuff to do. So, uh, hey, Savin, I, I really appreciate you coming on. I know uh, Bear has really enjoyed this discussion too. And uh, Bear, any final words for our guests or our, or our audience? No, just thanks. I think the whole discussion was positive myself. Um, you know, we're just talking about a lot of real things. We're talking about solutions. We uh, you know, I'm delighted we met another brother out there and, uh, you know, our networks get strong every time people like us all get together and talk about it. So, Oops. and, uh, I maybe even someday hope to see you down a uh, year end there. I'll bring my board with me oh, yeah. and, uh, love to catch some Costa Rican waves. It's been a long time. Absolutely. So, but thanks so much for being with us uh, and you're doing amazing things and uh, you know, it's people like you that give me hope uh, that they're, you know, good things are on the way, you know, I've been around a long time. Uh, you know, I, I just look at people like you and, and you are our future and just thanks for everything you're doing. And thanks so much for that bear. And also Michael for, you know, reaching out to me and, and having me on the show. And, uh, you know, again, I, I just want to tell the audience, you know, some of the conversations can be a little bit uncomfortable, but I also feel like these conversations are necessary for us to, to grow forward. And, uh, and I know that we will accomplish this because there's just something special about all of us. And as we begin to unlock that more and more and connect that together, then we'll strike that luck, if you may, and get that turn to where we see something different than uh, what we've all been able to witness. So yeah. let us go into the future. Let us go bravely, but let us all stay in the moment and realize the responsibility that we have with each other. And when we take that responsibility all together, it's not heavy. You know, it, yeah. it's, it's all sharing the load and then we're all, you know, we're all growing from it. So thank you again. Beautiful. Beautiful. Love it. Hey, thanks everybody for listening today. If you're listening on the, the podcast, uh, you can actually join with us live on DLive, dlive.tv forward slash Alpha Vedic. We do this every Thursday at 10 in the morning on Pacific Standard Time. So if you want to jump in the chat and interact with us, uh, ask questions for our guests, please join us there. We're embracing that uh, platform as of now because it's, uh, it's, it's pretty good and it's, uh, it's a you know, more decentralized uh, means of, of streaming. So DLive, uh, we're doing that. And then, of course, we premiere this on YouTube at 5 p.m. So you can watch this on YouTube as well on our YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, you can uh, find all the information about us on alphavedic.com. Join our mailing list, see our products, all that stuff. And we do have a very vibrant community on Telegram. It's probably the best place to join in in our daily consciousness stream with our community. There are some am just an amazing community, and I'm so grateful for everybody in our Telegram group. I just love our conversations, our discussions. It's really become a family. And so um, if you're not familiar with Telegram, it's a great little app you can get on your phone or, or computer. And it's just, uh, just like, a, like you're in a group chat um, with some structure, and it's what's wonderful. So you can join us at t.me forward slash alphavedic please jump in. In fact, during this discussion, uh, we've had a couple of uh, your community jump in already, uh, Sivan. So that's great. Um, we really enjoy Telegram. So uh, t.me forward slash Alpha Vedic. And thanks again, everybody. Have a blessed day. Remember to get out there, enjoy your life, get your hands dirty uh, in the soil if you can. As we always say, you know, get into growing your own food, get into nature, Go out and you know, go for a hike. If you live in the city, hit up your local park, do some yoga, meditation. It's just so important to just really um, in, enjoy nature as much as you can. It's just a really great way to get back to source. And uh, we'll leave it at that. Uh, thanks, everybody, and have a wonderful, blessed day. Cheers. Amen.